changes everything, everything. Come on, I know. I know it's hard to believe, but he's just that good. Come and taste, you'll see that he's just that good. If you've been where I've been, then you know what I mean. Yeah, he's just that good. Oh, he's just that good. Mercy in the morning, it's just that good. Brand new beginning, it's just that good. Joy that's never ending, it's just that good. Always oh, just that good. Oh, come on. Grace and compassion, it's just that good. He who gives with no condition, He defines a definition. Oh, he's just that good. Come on, mercy in the morning. Mercy in the morning. Brand new beginnings. Joy that's never ending. Oh, he's just that good. Yeah, he's just that good. Oh, he's just that good. Yeah, he's so good. I know it's hard to believe, but he's just that good. Come and taste. If you've been where I've been, then you know what I mean. Yeah, he's just that good. Oh, he's just that good. I know it's hard to believe, but he's just that good. Come and taste. If you've been where I've been, then you know what I mean. Yeah, he's just that good. Oh, he's just that good. Come on and give him praise if he's been good to you this week. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us as the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you are down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Oh, come and fill us, Lord. Come on, sing it as the Spirit. As the Spirit was moving over the The Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move on the rock. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. fire and wind. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart down. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart down. When you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and 
Lord. Come on and invite him in. Holy Spirit.
just ask him to meet you where you are. You may be in the valley today, but he has not left you. He has not forsaken you. He has not left you to fend for yourself. His spirit walks with you through the valley of the shadow of death. And just remember that it's always a shadow. It is not the true enemy. Come on. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come for His Spirit. Drive on. sing it one more time. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Lord, unless you come. Come and meet me here again. Lord, we need you today. Because all I want is all answered that prayer. He is here. He is here. If you ask, He will come. It's that simple. Again, we so overcomplicate things in the church. We overcomplicate the Holy Spirit. We overcomplicate a lot of things. If you ask, He will come. It's that simple. We have asked. He's here. And He's not just here to make you feel good. That's a byproduct. That's great. But that's not why He's here. If you've been around here for very long, you know we've talked a lot about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's here to do a lot of things. He convicts. He draws, draws us to God. He reminds us of the things we know. not just here to make you feel good. I want to get that through to you. It's a great thing. It's wonderful. He's good like that. But there's so much more to Him. I wouldn't want to be here without Him. Without Him, we're just meeting to be meeting. We need the Holy Spirit. We have to have Him in our life. Not just in the church, but in our life. When we walk out this door, We've got to have the Holy Spirit. I know I do. I need Him. I need Him. I don't just want Him. I need Him. <laughs> I'm so grateful that He's here. So grateful. And because He's here, we can bring these needs that we have to Him. Because He hears. It's another thing. <laughs> We're going to ask for for you to join us in prayer with 
several people today. Stephanie talked to me about a family that she knows. This family needs prayer. Their names are the Arnolds. They need peace. They need healing. They need restoration. They need a lot from God today. But guess what? He can do all that and so much more. What does Ephesians 3.20 say? Y'all have heard me say it a lot. Above anything we could ask or think. And we believe that for them. Continue to pray for Brother Larry Charping, for Ross Butler. There's a young man um, named Johnny. <laughs> Not this Johnny. There's a young man that's named Johnny who's going through chemo right now. Continue to pray for him. I'm so grateful to see Miss Sunshine here. I'm so grateful. God is, God is good. He's given her strength to be back in the house of God, and we are grateful for that. Continue to pray for Miss Claire. Y'all know Miss Claire would be standing right here singing <laughs> and shouting and doing all her things. Continue to pray for healing for her body. Um, let's pray for Allison Pruitt. Y'all, we have a new member coming this week, most likely. New life, baby. I love it. I love it. A new little girl will be here very soon. Continue to pray for Allison. Pray for their family. They have some that are sick in their family this morning. And listen, as many people as there are in this house, there's that many needs and more. But you know what's great? God sees and He knows. I love that He revealed Himself in this way to Hagar, the least likely person to be, you know, get anything revealed to her. If you haven't read her story, talk to me after. I'll show you where to find it. But she, she learned Him as the God who sees me. Isn't that beautiful? There's so many aspects of God that are beautiful, but I think that one to me is just so amazing. He sees us. He knows. And all these things He sees and knows, but even the ones you haven't spoken out loud, He knows those too. So as we pray today, as we pray for all of these things here, if you have a need before God, just whisper it to Him. It doesn't have to be a shout. It doesn't have to be loud. Sometimes a whisper is all it takes. <laughs> And what have we said around here before? Help is a full prayer. Jesus is a full prayer. Start there. Let's pray for these needs and let's pray for your needs as well. Father God, you are good. You are good. You are good to us. You see. You know. You can heal, restore, redeem you can do all the things that we cannot do. So, God, we come to you with these needs, saying we trust you with them. We cannot do anything about these needs but bring them to you, and we trust you that you are beginning your work even now. God, we thank you for Miss Sunshine. We thank you that she's here. Thank you for the healing you've done in her body. We pray that you continue to give her strength and power, God. We thank you for that. God, for all these that we've mentioned by name that need healing. God, we pray that wherever they are right now, in their living rooms, in rehab facilities, and hospitals, that you would come to them even now. Bring healing, bring strength according to your word that says, by your stripes, we are healed. You are willing, you are able, and we believe that, and we trust you for these healings today. God, in these situations that need peace and reconciliation and restoration, Holy Spirit, go there now. We know that you're already there. You're already meeting these needs. You're already doing a work, and we thank you for that. God, for every need that's represented in this house, no matter what it is, you already see, you already know, and we say, God, we trust you with these needs. We trust you to do what only you can do. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. As we continue through the rest of this service, let us not be in your way. Holy Spirit, move freely in this house. If we set aside any agendas, any schedules, any to-do lists, any, anything that would get in your way, Holy Spirit, we put it aside and say, Holy Spirit, come and do what you will. Do what you will in this place. We give you freedom. Move how you wish to, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the way that you interact with us. As unworthy humans, God, you've made us worthy to be in your presence, and we say we are grateful. We are so grateful for that. 
God, we pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Listen. Whew. It's already been good. <laughs> it's already been good, but it's just going to get better. Now, one way it's going to get better is if you turn around, move a little bit out of your seat, and say good morning to somebody. They may need your smile or your high five or your handshake or your hug that says, Welcome to the house of God today. I like this. I like that y'all are friendly uh, because, you know, I wouldn't want to be here if you weren't. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys love each other because you know what? That's what family does. What if we sit here a lot? We are family. Y'all got to act like it and not them crazy families you read about online. We are the good family. <laughs> We're the family you want to be part of. We are so grateful to have you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. And if this is your first time being here, welcome. We have we consider it an honor that you're here with us. We appreciate you being here and spending time with us. We just want to say you belong here, and we are so happy to have you here. If you did not get a visitor card on your way in, that's okay. You can get one on your way out. Or we have a very high-tech alternative. You can take your phone, open up your camera app, Point it right there at the screen at that QR code. Fill out a short little form that registers your visit. And guess what? When you leave, go stop by guest services and say, hey, I filled out the form online. And we'll give you a nice little gift that just says thanks for coming. And we appreciate you being here. If you're joining us online for the first time, welcome. If you're here for the first time with us, type that in there. We want to know that you're, that you're here for the first time. Now, whew, we've got some stuff coming up, y'all. It's summer. It's full swing. We've got a lot of things happening. An active church is a healthy church, right? We healthy, y'all. <laughs> I feel like we're running a marathon this summer, and it's going to be fun. First up is next Sunday. Not, not next Sunday. Next Saturday. Sorry. Uh, that's July the 1st. It's going to be our first ever BGMC bike-a-thon. We're going to raise money for BGMC, which, if you do not know, is Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. That's how the children get to give to missions in the Assemblies of God, and we are more than happy to support that. Come on, somebody. They were going, they're going to be here from 10 a.m. to 12 out here in the front parking lot. They're going to be riding their bikes. If you have not been asked to sponsor a child, find a child. They will be happy to take your funds for missions, not for them, okay? <laughs> they will be happy to do that. But, yeah, if you're not here next Saturday, if you don't have a child or a grandchild that's part of it, will you pray for them next, next Saturday? Do that. As they raise this money, as, as they're outside and doing this, just pray for them, that they would catch a heart for missions at this young age. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great that they could carry that through the rest of their lives, okay? Now, next Sunday, now it really is Sunday. Next Sunday is July the 2nd, and we are calling it Freedom Sunday. 
How about that? Does that not sound like something to show up for? Here's what's going to be great about it. We are going to be celebrating with some baptism, Joel. Again, if, if baptisms and watching people really, you know, make a public declaration of their faith don't fire you up, we're going to need to get you saved again. I'm just saying. The altar is open. I'm just <laughs> but seriously, y'all, this is people making a public declaration that they have been buried with Christ and raised with Him. That's beautiful. That's what this is about. And so we're going to celebrate that together next week. There's a sign-up sheet in the lobby. But listen up very closely. If you have already signed up, right after service today, right over here in Pastor... Again, I've promoted you again, Pastor Steve. <laughs> Brother Steve, in his classroom over here, we're going to have a short meeting for all of our baptism candidates just to give you an idea of what you need to bring, what to wear, all that sort of thing. So please make sure to meet Pastor over here after service today. Now... How many of y'all know that on the 4th of July it's hot? Guess what? On Wednesday, July the 5th, in the evening, it will not be as hot. So that's how we're going to celebrate this year. <laughs> we're going to have a church picnic from 6 to 8 on July the 5th. That's a Wednesday night. There's going to be inflatables. There's going to be food. There's going to be games. There's going to be all the things that come with a fun family picnic. However, we need your help, family. We're going to need a few items we need you to help us bring. There's a sign-up sheet. If you can't find the sign-up sheet for some reason, well, I don't know why you wouldn't, but see me, see Miss Debbie. We'll get you signed up to bring something to help contribute to the family picnic. Now, I'm ready to get out of the way because I'm ready to hear the word. I'm ready to give in the offering. I'm ready to do all the things. Are you ready? You sure? Okay, come on. You got it. There you go. <laughs> Amen, amen. Give Miss Amy a big hand for helping us out today. Listen, she's right. Our worship is not over because what we're about to do is still a part of worship, amen. I want to read a scripture to you real quick. It says, John, in John chapter 12, verse 24, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone, but its death will produce many new kernels. A plentiful harvest of new lives. Now, I hear people talk about the offering all the time, and I understand that Jesus Christ was talking about his, his death and resurrection here. I understand he was talking about salvation that was being offered through his sacrifice. But there's also a lesson that we can take home about our giving in this lesson. Because it says, in, in NIV, it says, unless a seed dies, it will not produce. Unless it put, is put into the ground and, and sown, it will not produce fruit for the future harvest. I've heard plenty of people say, I'm ready for the harvest, I'm ready for the harvest, but they never put a seed in the ground. They never, they, they never and I'm not talking about just offering either. I'm talking about even their prayers. They sit there and say, God, I want to harvest, but I'm not. I don't want it enough to really put the work in to plow the field. We've got to get to the point, church, to where we are willing to sow seed. See, that's, this, this lesson in here, it, 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 it says that we have to prepare for a harvest. It doesn't just happen. We've been praying for over two years for a harvest for souls. We started on Wednesday nights when I first got here. Praying for souls, praying for prodigals to come home, praying for open doors and opportunity. And lo and behold, what happened a little bit later after we started that prayer meeting on Wednesday nights? All of a sudden, we started seeing guests come. We started seeing opportunities to minister around town. We started seeing, but why? Because we sowed seed. But we also need to sow financial seed for the future harvest. See, we all want to be blessed but it's sort of like a farmer. A farmer can't take his entire crop and put it in the storehouse and eat it all. He has to set aside a portion of it in order to put it into the ground so that he can produce a future harvest. When God asks us to give him his 10%, he's just asking us to set aside a future seed so that he can bless us great, great and mightily later on. If you're with me, say, I am. Listen. Our size of our harvest will always be in proportion to the seed that we sow. How much seed are you sowing 
not just financially, but spiritually. How much seed are you sowing? How much seed are you casting out onto the ground? The reason why we support 24 missionaries is because we believe in sowing seed. The reason why we bring in evangelists like Brother Johnny today is because we believe in sowing seed. Or the reason why we bring in people and we, we minister to schools around town and give them snacks for their schools or, or give them backpacks for their children is because we believe in sowing seed. And when you sow seed into this ministry, you're sowing seed into the kingdom, not into us. What do we always say? We want you to experience God. We want you to discover purpose. And we want you to invest in the kingdom. Today, if you want to invest in the kingdom, you, there's three ways you can do it today. You can invest by going to our table in the back. It says tithes and offerings. Filling out an envelope. Put it in there. We'll make sure it gets where it needs to go. You can go to ctaganiston.com and follow the giving platform on there. It's so easy to use. Or you can just mail it into the church, and we'll take care of it from there. If you understand me, say, I do. Stretch your hands out towards me. Let me bless you this morning. Father God, today, I pray for this offering. I pray for the, the people that give in this offering. I pray for the people that have mailed it in this week, those that have given online, those that are watching online right now, God, who are, who are trying to decide whether they have enough money to sow seed. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would, you would touch their hearts. I pray for you to touch the hearts of the people that are in this room, that, God, you would pour it back down on them. Whatever they give, Lord, I pray that you would pour it back to them, press down, shake it together, running over with the, according to with which the heart that they give. Lord, make us cheerful givers. Givers that celebrate the fact that we get to give and we get to sow seed for a harvest that will be reaped in the future. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen. Can we give God praise? Now, uh, if you came to hear me preach today, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. You get somebody better. You, somebody, and listen, uh, I have known Brother Johnny Jernigan for 34, 32 years, somewhere around there. Back when I was 16 years old, I went to his youth camp. And I remember him preaching that day. I remember I was wearing a, a red shirt with a black tie and black pants that day. That's how, listen, I may be old, but I still got a mind, Okay. But I remember sitting on the front row, and I was all excited. I had just given my life to Christ that, that year, and I had been serving God about eight months at that time, and I was all excited to be there with Brother Johnny. And I remember him coming up to me and tapping me on the shoulder during the middle of his message, and all of a sudden he says, Get up! And I went, Oh, no. And then he said, Bend over. And I bent over, and he reached down, and he got up underneath me and picked me up, put me on his shoulder, and carried me onto the stage. He did that with about three or four of us, and he was doing an illustration of, and I'm not going to do it to you today, I promise you, but uh, yes, but, uh, but he was doing an illustration on how to get people to church. Bring them, no matter what it takes. Bring them to Christ, no matter what it takes. This man has a heart for the lost, he has a heart for communities, and he has a heart for God. And today, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit shakes your world and your foundations through the word that he brings today. Can we please welcome evangelist Johnny Jernigan. Amen, amen. Hey, can we all stand together? I know we just let you sit down. Can we all stand up together if you're able to do that with me? Can we give Jesus the greatest shout of praise that we can today? Father, we bless you, we exalt you, we magnify you, and we place you on the high place. You are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Remain standing, would you? Everybody smile big. Let me see all your teeth. Make this faith declaration out loud. Come on, say it out loud. Say, I believe that God wants me to win. Come on, smile and say it again. I believe that God wants me to win. Now, how many know if you tell a lie long enough, you'll believe it? Come on. And how many of you tell the truth long enough, you'll believe it? And I just want to declare this over you today. Are there any Alabama Crimson Tide fans in here today? Anybody? Okay. Uh, any Auburn Tiger fans in here today? All right. Well, does anybody love Jesus? Let me hear from you. Come on. All right. I just want to declare to you today, God truly wants you to win in every area of your life. Not just in your faith. He wants you to win in your family. He wants you to win in your relationships. He wants you to win in your health. He wants you to win in your finances. I heard somebody say a long time ago, Jesus is not coming back for a bunch of losers. 
Hallelujah. He's coming back for a victorious church, a triumphant church, a winning church. And I just declare this over you today, and I just declare it with all my heart to you. God truly wants you to win today. If you believe that, say, I believe. Amen, amen. Hey, it's an honor to be here with you today. Uh, they were asking me if I've ever been to this church before, and I believe I spoke at a youth rally in 1988 in this church a long, long time ago. Shut up, young people. I know it's a long time ago. And so, uh, I, I, but I, I think that was the only time that I've ever had the honor of being here. And I'm just so proud of Pastor Aaron and Pastor Amy. Do you love your pastors? Come on, do you love them? And uh, I, just so proud of how God has used you and so proud of how God is using you. And you have wonderful pastors. Uh, and it's my honor to be here with you. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, my name is Johnny Jernigan. I'm the Director of Evangelism for the Assembly of God Churches in the state of Alabama. And then I also work out of our national office in Springfield, Missouri, with churches all over the country. And uh, just to teach them how they can share their faith and how they can reach out to their community. And it's just awesome what God is doing all over the country. So my name's Johnny. You know my name. I don't know all of you. So on the count of three, would everybody tell me your name as loud as you can? Here we go. One. One, two, three. All right, now I know everybody. All right. Hey, what I'm about to share with you this morning, I believe if Jesus was here, I believe that this is what Jesus would say. I really believe that the Lord has given me something to encourage you with and to, and to build you up with of what God can do in us and what God can do through us. And I believe if the Lord were here today, this might be what he would say. So I, 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 here's the rules this morning, all right? I, I preach much better when you preach with me. And so help me preach this morning. And here's the rules. If I say something that sounds good, you say, amen, hallelujah, that was good. And if I say something you don't like, you say, amen, hallelujah, that was good, all right? So you help me this morning, all right? So let's pray for two things. First of all, let's pray for God's anointing. Everybody say God's anointing. The Bible says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's not worship. It's not preaching. It's His anointing that breaks the yoke. So I need you to believe for the anointing of God to come on each of us. Uh, you pray the Lord will anoint me to speak because I'm praying the Lord's going to anoint you to hear. Amen? And we're going to believe for miracles in this house today and that God will speak in a great way. Amen? Second thing I want us to pray for is an open heart. Everybody say an open heart. In these next three hours as I preach, I just know that God is going to say something powerful. Hallelujah. Some of you are like, does he mean that? All right. No, uh, blessed are the brief, for they shall be heard again. All right. So we'll get to come back another time. We're going to get you out on time. But listen to this. I don't know everything, but neither do you. And if you think you do, then God can't do anything to help you. But if you'll open your heart and say, God, speak to me today. Touch me today. He's no respecter of persons. And whatever is hurting and whatever is broken in your life, whatever pressure is on you, he is here to help you. He is here to strengthen you. And he is here to help you walk through that if you believe that. Amen. Would you lift your hands to the Lord with me if you're comfortable with that? If not, just would you bow your heads with me? And would you pray for the anointing to come in this room by the power of only what our God can do? Father, thank you, Lord. Lord, for Pastor Aaron and Pastor Amy. Thank you, God, for what you're doing here in this church at Calvary Temple. And God, we're believing that the best is yet to come, that the greatest days of this church are not behind it. The greatest days of this church are still in front of Calvary Temple. And so, Lord, I'm asking that today will count, today will matter, and that, Lord, that you would come in power in this service today. And you would do what no evangelist can do. You'll do what no speaker can do. You will come and touch the youngest to the oldest and not one of us will leave the same way that we came in, but we'll walk out believing in a big God and that nothing is impossible for you. So, Lord, give us ears to hear and eyes to see that, Lord, you are still on the throne and you are still at work. You are still healing. You are still delivering. And you are still setting free. So do it in this room today. Empower us. Strengthen us. And, Lord, when we leave in just a little while, may we leave encouraged and built up and strengthened and better than we were when we came in. And we give you the praise and the glory in the honor for it all in Jesus' name. And if you agree, everybody say amen. Hey, before you're seated, would you look at somebody next to you right in the eyes and say, man, you look good today. Tell them just like that. Man, you look good today. Tell them just like that. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You can be seated. Have you have your Bibles with you or your device with you? Uh, can you open your Bibles or your device to Luke chapter 17? Luke chapter 17 and beginning in verse 20. We'll look at God's Word there together. Luke chapter 17 and beginning in verse 20 this morning. And I'll be reading from the New International Version if it's different from yours. Luke chapter 17 and beginning of verse 20. I want you to look at this if you would. I have a gift for everyone today. I love to give things away. And we have a gift for everyone. This is uh, 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 from the American Bible Society. They have put out uh, a teaching, a booklet, with everything that Jesus said. And everything else in the New Testament extracted only what Jesus taught. So if people want to know, what did Jesus really teach? What did Jesus really say? This is a compilation of all of the teachings of Jesus. And it's a wonderful gift. I'm going to ask you to get at least two of these today. And take one for yourself and take one to give it away. Give it to a neighbor. Give it to a, a, a family member. Give it to a, a, a classmate, a friend, an employee, or an employer. Give it away. And so we have all these out there on the uh, table out there after the service. And that's available for you after the service today. So please go by there and make uh, yourself available to that. I'm so glad to have some friends here with me today that have come over from Leeds, Alabama. All the, the, the big city of Leeds. Uh, they've come over this morning. Uh, Shaylene. Jennifer and Todd, would you guys stand? Uh, these guys are with Love Life, and, uh, and would you welcome them today? I'm so glad to have them here. Um, they're with Love Life. Love Life is a ministry that just helps uh, women with unplanned pregnancies and families going through a very difficult time that the church, they won't run to an abortion clinic, they'll run to the house of God. And they'll find help, and they'll find hope, and they'll find strength at the house of God. And their whole families can be built up and encouraged and strengthened. And, and they've got some materials that they'll be leaving here today. And I hope that you can hear more about Love Life in the days ahead. So proud of what their ministry is doing. And be sure and greet them and find out a little bit more about that after the service today. Glad to have you guys with us. Uh, there's a story of this little rabbit one day. He, he, he ran into this paint store. And he asked the owner of the paint store, he said, do you have any carrots here? And the owner of the paint store said, well, little buddy, this is a paint store. Uh, we don't have any carrots here. If you want carrots, you'll have to go somewhere else. I apologize. So the little rabbit hopped out of the paint store. Next day, little rabbit hopped back in the paint store, and he asked the owner of the paint store, he said, do you have any carrots here? And the, paint, uh, the, the manager at the paint store said, well, little buddy, I told you yesterday, uh, this is a paint store. We don't have any carrots here. If you want carrots, you'll have to go somewhere else. I apologize. So the little rabbit hopped out of the paint store. Next day, little rabbit hopped back in the paint store. And he asked the owner of the, of the paint store, he said, do you have any carrots here? And the owner of the paint store got a little frustrated. He said, look, buddy, I've told you twice now, this is a paint store. We only sell paint here. We don't have any carrots here. And you'll have to go somewhere else to get those. And if you come back in here again asking for carrots, I'm going to nail you to the wall by your ears. So the little rabbit hopped out of the paint store. Next day, little rabbit hopped back in the paint store. And he asked the owner of the paint store, he said, do you have any nails? He said, no. He said, good. Do you have any carrots? All right. Now, that is the attitude that I, I want to talk with you today about what I'm going to share with you. Uh, I am a pure evangelist. I am not a traveling speaker. I am not a traveling preacher. I am a soul winner. I ache to tell people about Jesus. I go, from the time I get up in the morning to the time I go to bed at night, I am working and finding out how can we engage people and talk to them about faith in Christ. And we do an outreach all over the country called the Right to Invite Outreach Weekend. The Right to Invite. To earn the right to invite people to the house of God. Jesus was very, very good at asking questions. Yes? If you think about the woman at the well, what did Jesus do with her? He didn't just walk up to her and begin to prophesy to her. He asked her a question. He said, could I have something to drink? And she said, you don't have a bucket to draw any water with. He said, oh, you're right, but if you taste this water, you'll never thirst again. And then he began a conversation with her that she ran down into the city, told everybody else, come see the guy who has told me everything about me. And they all came back, and they met Jesus. And the Bible tells us that it said, now we believe, not because of what you have said, but because of what we have heard. And the whole community converted to following Jesus. Somebody say amen. And so we do this every week somewhere all over the country. I was in Portland, Oregon just a few weeks ago. I was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania about a month ago. Uh, I'll be back in California. How many of you know that is the land of fruits and nuts? All right. And so I'll be back out there in just a few weeks. And uh, last week I was in Birmingham. And so every week we're in different cities helping churches 
learn how they can reach out to their community. And we primarily do it going into area businesses. You can't go door to door today in American culture because in a post-COVID crime culture, people don't open their doors to strangers. How do, how do you treat people who are strangers when they come to your door? You treat them like strangers, right? I do the same thing. We, we just don't want to open our door anymore to strangers when they come to our house. So I, uh, Pastor Aaron will tell you, I used to fight for that door to door. And we did that all over the country for years and years and years. But when the Lord, we got it after post COVID, I was like, Lord, how can we reach the masses? And he said, go to the area businesses. Because how many of you know it's not weird to walk in a business? They expect us to walk in their business. They're not going to be mean to us when they walk in their business. And so what we do is we get a little bag of candy. At, like you have your, your candy bombs out there. I love that name. I'm going to steal that. But you, you have your candy bombs out there. And we walk into area businesses uh, two by two because that's how Jesus sent them out. And we walk in into these businesses. And uh, I'll say, hi, my name is Johnny. This is my wife, Karen. And, and, and we are from Calvary Temple Assembly of God. And we just wanted to come by your business today and say thank you for what you do. Thank you for the people that you employ. Thank you for the great services you offer. Uh, thank you for staying open during a pandemic. And for all the mean people who come in your business, we want to say thank you. Has anybody here ever worked retail? Hold your hand up if you have. Can people be mean? They can be vicious. And every time we say for all the mean people, they go, oh, yeah, we know about those people. And we give them a little bag of candy, just a little something to sweeten their day, and just to tell them that we appreciate them. Can I promise you, nobody goes in those businesses just to say thank you for what they do in that community. So the church earns a right to go into their business and invite them to come. And can I, can I just give you some good news? Can I, how many of you know news today is not news unless it's bad? So I want to give you some good news. Because and, 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 and I want you to know the dark is going to keep on getting darker, but the light is going to keep on getting brighter. Hallelujah. And the closer we get to the return of the Lord, the stronger His light is going to shine on us. We, we were in Portland, Oregon, as I told you just a few weeks ago, and we walked into a subway. Uh, and uh, there was a guy behind the counter. He was the only one in there. He had his hair spiked up about a foot off the top of his head, and his hair spiked straight up. He had tattoos all over him, all the way down to his toes and his sandals. I mean, there wasn't an inch on this boy. He didn't have ink. And he had piercings all over his body. And places that you should not have piercings, this boy had piercings. And the look on his face was, go away. So I walk in with the pastor. His name was Shane. And we're from Harvest Assembly of God. So we walk into his business. I said, hey, uh, I'm Johnny, and this is uh, uh, Shane. We're from Harvest Assembly of God Church right down the street here. And we just wanted to come in your business and say, thank you for what you do in this community. We just want to give you a little bag of candy just to sweeten your day and, and say thank you for what you do. Thank you for the people you employ. Thank you for what you do for the economy. And how many of you remember they were burning Portland to the ground two years ago? It's still going on. And we said, for all the craziness that's going on in Portland, we want to say thank you for what you do. The guy stepped back. He said, wow, man, nobody's ever come in here and just said thank you for what we do, cooking, uh, making sandwiches at Subway. He said, I appreciate that. So then we pulled out a card, said we're from Harvest Assembly of God Church. We'd like to invite you to our church. We reap where we sow. So by sowing a gift of candy, we reap an opportunity to invite him. We said, we'd like to invite you to our church. He stuck his hand out and he said, listen. He said, I'm an atheist. He said, I don't do the God thing. He said, but I really appreciate you coming in here today. And how many of you know we need discernment? When to talk and when not to talk. And you can tell already it's hard for me not to talk. All right? So the Lord said, don't say anything else. Just love this guy. So we didn't say anything else to him. We didn't push him. We said, well, you know, his name was Tim. Well, Tim, listen, man, you're welcome at Harvest Assembly. And people can believe or not believe whatever they want to, but we just want you to know you're welcome. And, man, thank you for what you do, and we hope all goes well for you. We turned to walk out. When we got to the door, we turned around. He was already eating the candy out of the bag that we had given him. He stuck the card that we gave him in his back pocket. He was the manager, and he had pulled a double shift that day because nobody wanted to work. And so he went home late that night, and he was undressing. He pulled the card out that we gave him that said, you're invited to Harvest Assembly of God Church. He looked at it, and he said, you know what? Those guys were really nice. He said, I think I want to go to that church just to see what they do. 
Come on, somebody. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus is cool and Satan's a fool. Come on, somebody. And so he said, I want to just go to see what they do in that church. So the next morning, he comes in and sits on the very back row of the church. And his wife was right next to him. And her hair was spiked up just like his. She had tattoos all over her just like him. She had piercings all over her just like him. And they had their arms folded the entire time I was preaching with a scowl on their face. And I thought, what they were thinking was, we're going to murder you right after this service. Now, that's what I was thinking. Because they had this look on their face like, what in the world is going on? And they were just trying to process it. When I gave the invitation at the end of the service, he said it's the first time he ever heard God speak to him. He said, I heard a voice that said, what they're saying is true, and you need this. Not what I was saying, because I'm a nobody from nowhere, but what God was saying. And I believe he was hearing Father, Son, and Holy Spirit say to him, Tim, I love you. Tim, I have a better plan for you. Tim, life can be better than it is right now. I can fill you with joy, Tim, if you'll know who I am. And when I gave the invitation, he and his wife came to the altar that day, and they gave their life to Jesus and have been attending that church ever since that time. Come on, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Listen, I, I, just a couple of months ago, I was in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and, and we walked into an area of business, and there were two teenagers, like those two guys right there. Will y'all stand up? Puma, will you stand up? Yeah. And, and the guy next to you, will you stand up? The tall, tall, ugly one. Yeah, there you go. All right, yeah. And, uh, and so uh, there were these two teenagers just like this that walked into a Thai food restaurant. Who knows? Anybody like Thai food? And so they walked in, and uh, it was about 1030 in the morning, and these knuckleheads, kind of like this, they walked in with their bags of candy, and they walked into this Thai restaurant. And, and, and they said, hi, we're from Freedom Church, because that's the church we were with in Chattanooga. And we're out blessing all the businesses today just to say thank you for what you do in our community. Thank you for the great food you cook. Thank you for the people you employ. Thank you for what you do for the economy. And for all the mean people who come in your business, we want to say thank you. And the guy was Vietnamese. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do a Vietnamese accent. Let me go ahead and give a disclaimer. This will be bad. But I'm going to do my best to do the way he did it. He said, you give me candy? And they said, yes, this is for you. He said, why you give me candy? They said, because Jesus loves you. He said, Jesus loved me? And they said, yes. He said, wait right here. So he goes to the back of his restaurant, comes back with five to-go trays of Thai food and had it all in a bag and gave it to them and said, you give me gift, I give you gift. Then he said, why you give me candy? He was really confused while they were doing this because he was Buddhist. He didn't know who Jesus was. He had only heard of him and what Jesus, uh, who Jesus was. And so turn around, boys. Just turn around and smile at everybody real big. Just smile. Get a big, ugly smile on your face. There you go. And so they smiled at him, and they began to talk to him about what God could do in his life. And they began, and now you can turn around and look at me, all right? And, and so I teach people all the time just to keep the Roman road scriptures to salvation right here on their cell phone. And they had downloaded all those scriptures. And they began to read him uh, that, that, that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of that sin, the payment for that sin is death. But the good news is the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Is that good news? Come on. Then they read Romans 5, 8, that God demonstrated his great love for us. And that while we were still in our sin, in all of our mistakes, Christ died for us. And then they read Romans 10, 9, and 10. Can I turn around and smile one more time? And they read Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. With a heart we believe and we're justified. With our mouth we confess and we are born again. Can you turn around and look at me again? All right. And, and I want you to know the guy in the Thai restaurant, he said, what is this from? They said, this is from the Bible. He said, is this how you become Christian? And they said, yes. He said, I want to become Christian. And standing right there in his Thai restaurant, two ugly boys like these began to pray uh, handsome boys, I mean, they began to pray right there in that restaurant. The next morning, he came to the church, and he's about this tall. He made me feel really tall. He was about this tall, and he walked in, and he said, and he was just weeping. He said, I feel love. I feel love. I feel love. And everybody was just embracing him and hugging him and welcoming him, and he's been attending that church ever since that time. Come on, can somebody say amen? You can sit down. Listen. We do this every week. Can I just tell you one more? Can I tell you one more? We were in a Papa John's restaurant down in Phoenix City. 
with Brother B uh, Danner uh, before he retired. And we walked into a Papa John's, and there was a girl there that morning who was my partner. She went out with me. She kind of looked like that girl back there in the very back with the long, dark hair. With Sister Red Shirt, hold your hand up so they know who I'm talking to. Hold it up real high. Okay. And so kind of looked like Sister Red Shirt back there. And so she was my partner, and she had just moved from Japan to go to Troy University. And so we walk into this Papa John's, and as soon as we walk in, there's a girl that I can tell is Asian. And I am trying everything in my evangelist power to talk to this girl, and I am crashing and burning bad. I mean, the, the language barrier was so difficult, she couldn't understand a word I was saying. And finally, the little girl that was with me, her name was Tina, she, she, she took, pulled on my shirt. She said, can I talk to her? And I said, sure. And they started chewing each other up. This girl behind the counter at Papa John's was from Japan, had moved there a year earlier to go to Troy University, and they didn't even know each other were there. So they're just chewing each other up, speaking Japanese, and I'm just kind of looking at them going back and forth there in that restaurant. And then they both bowed their heads, and they look up, and she said, she just got saved. <laughs> and she prayed with her to receive Christ right there in the Papa John's restaurant. Nothing times nothing is nothing. If we try nothing, guess what we get? Nothing every time. And I can just tell you, city after city, church after church, every time we go out, God always gives us people who come into the house of God because we reap where we sow. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you what? Fishers of men, not keepers of the aquarium. Amen? That I'll help you to go fishing for people and that they, listen, if we're not excited about Jesus, is anybody else going to be excited about Jesus? And so we have to demonstrate that the love of God has set us free and that God can do it for them as well. Amen? Man, we just, I, I just know that that's the kind of pastors that you have. I, I, I just talked to them this uh, over the last couple of days and just hearing Pastor Aaron and the dream that he has for this church uh, if, if, if we can join together and believe that God, wouldn't it be awesome if this place was filled to capacity today? Wouldn't it be awesome if we had to buy new chairs? Come on. If we had to uh, do two services because so many people are coming here. Can God do that? Come on, can God do that? And so I believe we're not waiting on God. I believe God is waiting on us to say we're going to go to the highways and hedges and compel them. I didn't, I didn't remember picking you up, but we'll do whatever we have to to get them in the house of God because, listen, it's almost too late. While I was in Chattanooga, the Holy Spirit began to groan through me in the altar call. And this has only happened to me twice in all of my 44 years of ministry. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit began to groan in me. And he said, it's almost too late. It's almost too late. It's almost too late. It'll be like it was in the days of Noah. They'll be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, and they won't even know what's happened until the flood comes and takes them all the way. Open the door, Noah. Let us in, Noah. But it'll be too late. And the Lord said, Johnny, it's almost too late. We've got to do everything that we can to let people know what God can do in their life. Yes. Will you lay your hand on your heart with me? Come on, can you pray with me? Would you just bow your heads? Come on, will you just say this? Can we just all declare this out loud? Will you say it with me? Pray this out loud with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, touch my heart today and fill my heart with your heart that I will see my community the way you see my community. It's almost too late. Help us to go to them with our pastor's vision and your word, and we believe, O oh God, you will set the captive free. Here I am, Lord. Use me in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Can I tell you what? You sound so good. Everybody smile and say, I love the little preacher. I think he's a sweet little man. I hope you do. I want to talk to you this morning. I brought a, a pool up here with me I, I, for my illustration. I want to talk to you a sermon for a title. If you like titles, this is the title of my sermon, Stay in the Pool. Can you say that with me? Stay in the pool. Not just in the summertime, all year long, stay in the pool. I hope that will make sense in just a moment. While we're sitting in here and we're looking at what's happening all around us, our nation's falling apart. The world is falling apart. We've never seen the acceleration of things around the world the way that we're seeing them right now.
And we've also seen the acceleration of the things of God. How many of you heard about the Asbury Revival? Wave at me. And all of a sudden, when those students began to meet there in Kentucky, the wind began to blow all around the world. They were meeting in Pakistan, and Christians were gathering. They were meeting in India, and students were meeting and seeing all these ugly young people and that pretty girl, all right, and, and, and all up here in the front, and, the, and, and all the young people that are here, seeing that, that God is moving among this generation, and the wind is blowing literally around the world, that at the same time that things are getting so dark, God is roaring with His Spirit all around the world where people are hungering and thirsting for the things of God. We have not because we ask not. He said, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be. So I, I, I want to I talk to you this morning uh, uh, about this topic, stay in the pool. Can I tell you this? I do not believe you'll survive in the world that we're living in right now if you don't learn how to stay in God's presence. I do not believe you'll survive in the hours that we're in. There's a seducing spirit that all we hear with the trans transgender and re uh, re-identification that's going on around our country, all that we hear happening in the political arena, all that we're hearing in the LGBTQ community. And let me tell you this, God loves the homosexual. He's, he, he, God loves them. He's not happy with their lifestyle. And how many of you know we have to love them too before it's too late? And so we hear all these things that are happening all around our world, and it feels like everything that can be shaken is shaken right now. And yet at the same time, God is moving. Will you read this passage of Scripture with me? And it's in Luke chapter 17, uh, verse uh, 20 and 21. It'll be on the screen. Can we read this together? Come on, can you all read this with me? Come on. Uh, if you, uh, say this with me. Let's, yeah, there you go. That's better. Can we all read this? Everybody read it out loud with me. I love when we read the Word of God together. Come on, read it. Once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. In verse 21, he goes on to say, nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. The King James says, the kingdom of God is among you. Look at me if you would. One of the main themes that Jesus preached when he was here was about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. It was one of the primary things of Jesus preaching, that he would bring the kingdom of God among men. Yes, it would be a kingdom of among kingdoms. And what we see happening in the world right now is a clashing of worldviews, a clashing of kingdoms, of the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world. They are clashing at a level we've never observed in our culture. And since the pandemic, people have gotten mean. Come on. They've gotten angry. They've gotten violent. They're not scared of the police. They're not scared of jail. They're not scared of God. And the demons have been vomited on the earth during the pandemic. And we're seeing all of this pressure that's going on. At the same time, the kingdom of God is moving. At the same time, God is roaring among his people. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 91, you know that verse probably uh, by heart. It said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's one key word in that passage, and it's this word dwells. Not the person who visits it on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Not the person who goes there every once in a while on Wednesday night. But the person who dwells in the secret place. And the Bible even called it a secret place. There was a place that we could go and that we could meet with God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Word of God teaches us we're to be in this world but not. Okay? Now that's very, very difficult because God, we live in this world in our flesh. But God was trying to say, I want to show you something else. That there's a place you can go. And you can move out of this world and you can be with me. Hallelujah. We're to be in this world but not of it. The Bible, we know the story. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. So it, the Bible talks about, again, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. We can run to a place and we can find the safety of the Lord. What does the Lord's prayer say? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom 
come. One of the things that Jesus was trying to communicate in Luke chapter 17, he said, once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he replied, the coming of the kingdom is not something that can be observed. People will, nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Look at me. Here's what Jesus was saying. The kingdom of God is not in Birmingham, and you can drive to Birmingham, and you can see God there. The kingdom of God is not in Omaha, Nebraska, and you can buy, drive to the heartland, and you can find God there in Omaha, Nebraska. Here's what God was saying, that my kingdom will live within you. Yes, my kingdom will be with you. So I want to show you my illustration this morning, and I want you to believe with me. Can everybody look at this, that in the swimming pool, I want you to believe with me that this swimming pool represents the kingdom of God and all of His glory and all of His power and all of His miracles and all of His presence that when I'm fearful, I can find His presence in the pool. Yes? When I'm confused, I can find answers in the pool. Yes? When I need direction, I can find direction in the pool. Yes? When I need His assistance, I can find His assistance in the pool. So everything that the kingdom of God represents is in this pool. Are you with me? Everything else in this church, everything else in this building represents the kingdoms of this world. And those two are constantly clashing. So in my illustration, am I standing in the kingdom of God in my illustration right now? Am I standing in it? Yes or no? Can I hear you? Okay. Am I standing in it now? Come on. Am I standing in it now? Come on. Can you indulge me? Am I standing in it now? Come on. One more time. Can you help me? Am I standing in it now? How did I get into here? I made a willful decision to step out of that realm, to step over into this realm, that anything that I need at any time, I can find it in the kingdom of God. If I only see the power of God alive in my life Sunday morning from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, I'm going to live a very defeated Christian experience in this world. I I, I just don't believe you're going to survive in this hour if you only taste the things of God on Sunday morning while the wonderful pastors are preaching to us or while we have this music or we get to fellowship with each other. Because I want you to understand, I can step in this pool at any time. Because here's what I have found and what God has taught me is that the pool of God's presence is portable. I can take it with me wherever I go. I drove in here early this morning, and I was just driving around the community, and I stopped at the traffic light right up the street here, and I felt like I sat there for about 22 minutes. And I thought, that traffic light is never going to change. So while I was sitting there, I thought, well, Lord, I'm just asking you to move. So I just threw the pool down at the traffic light, just two traffic lights up from the church, and I just stepped over into it, and, and I turned on some CC Winans. Anybody ever heard that before? And I just began to sing, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Everything your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Who knows that song? And I, I want you to know the presence of God just came in the car there with me, and I was having a party with God right there in my car. And then I went about 30 feet further down, and I hit that second traffic light, and it lasted about 22 more minutes. So I just threw the pool down, and I stepped back over into it, and I just began to sing again that, you know, I just began to sing the songs of God, that God is with me. And all of a sudden, the presence of God came into my car with me. Because if the only time I ever taste the power of God is in this church... I just don't believe we're going to live a very victorious life. But I can have it in my bedroom. I can have it in my car. I can have it on my job. I can have it in my school. I can have it in the neighborhood. I can have it in the shopping mall. That wherever I go, the presence of God does not have to leave me. I can stay in the pool. Am I standing in it right now? Help me, yes or no. Okay, am I standing in it now? Come on, help me. Am I standing in it now? Come on, am I standing in it now? Why? How did I get out of it? I made a willful decision to step out of that realm and step back over into this natural realm. See, there are two realms that are warring in this room, even right now while we're sitting here. There are two realms. One is called the natural realm. Everybody say the natural realm. The other realm is called the spirit realm. Everybody say the spirit realm. See, some things in this world are, 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 are matter only. Some things are natural only. Look at me if you would. This pulpit is matter only. It's not living. It's an inanimate object. There's no life in it. It's just matter only. Is that right? This cell phone that I'm holding right here 
is matter only. There's no life in this. It's just an inanimate object. It's just matter only. This microphone is matter only. There's no living ability in this microphone. It is matter only. So look at me. Some things are matter only, okay? Some things are spirit only. God is spirit, yes? Angels are spirits, yes? Demons are spirits, yes? Look at me if you would. I want you to catch this real quick. We are the only part of all of creation that has to live in both realms at the same time, of both the natural and the spirit. The fishes of the sea, the birds of the air, the animal kingdom do not have a spirit being. They do not have what we as human beings have. Created in the image of the Most High God, we are the only part of all of creation that has to live in both the natural and in the spirit at the same time. And I can promise you it is a lot easier to live in the natural than it is to live in the spirit. Let me, let me show you. How many of you have ever been out here on I-20 and you're driving and you're just on your way and somebody cuts you off? Okay? Or somebody goes real slow right in front of you or you almost have an accident. Okay, you got one of two choices. If you live in the spirit realm, you're going to say, oh, God, put your angels around them today. As they drive down I-20 and they're driving like this, God, just help them, God. Keep them safe, God, in Jesus' name. Or you're going to hit the gas pedal and drive beside them and scream something as you run by them, which can get you killed today. Yes. So I want you to understand that your, uh, young people, your parents tell you to clean your room. And you look at your mom and say, I wasn't born to clean my room. And then mom shows you that you're going to clean your room. Hallelujah. If, if you clean your room, if you're going to live in the spirit, you're going to say, oh, yes, mommy, I love to clean my room. And I'll clean my room and your, t- your room too, mommy. You're either going to do that or you're going to say, mom, I, this is not my job. This is your job as my mom. And my mom, I don't know about your mom, but my mom taught me very, very quickly what my jobs were. Yes. We're the only part of all of, human, of creation that has to live in the spirit realm, because you can watch ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, and even Fox Network, and you can get depressed very, very quickly. And we can get so angry at what we see happening through this administration. We can get so angry at what we see happening. And let me just tell you this. God is not a Republican or a Democrat. God is transcendent above it all. And, but at the same time, we look at these things, and it gets so confusing to us, and we can become so angry and so frustrated by the things that are going on that we, we forget that, God, I have a place that I can run to. I have a refuge that I can go to. I have a safe place that I can go to. And God says, if you'll learn to live in the pool, stay in the pool. Don't just visit it. Keep it with you at all times. Carry it with you wherever you go and just throw it down and say, God, I'm not just going to focus on the stupidity of what's going on in our culture today. I'm going to come away. I'm going to run into the secret place. And I'm going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And, God, I believe that everything I need is in this pool. Yes? Am I standing in it right now? Come on, am I standing in it now? Come on, help me. Am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a choice to step out of that realm. I made a decision to get back in this realm so that everything that I need, I can find in this place. Are you with me? Let me give you three words very quickly. I want you to write this down, if you can. Three words that have transformed my life in this understanding. Because I, I don't, as an evangelist, I don't want to just visit the realm of the Spirit. I want to live in the realm of the Spirit. Because I have found that the Spirit realm is far more real than the natural realm. And that the miracles of God are in that realm. Look at me, and I don't want you, can, can I just tell you something that happened? You can look this up in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, on, on YouTube. It's called The Miracle in Mobile. The Miracle in Mobile. I hope you'll go look it up on YouTube. Uh, it's a, about a woman named Delia Knox. Uh, she, uh, she and her husband pastor a very large African-American church in Mobile, which is my home. And, and uh, 25 years ago, uh, it's been longer than that now, 28 years ago, on Christmas Eve, she was in a horrible automobile accident. And she was paralyzed from the waist down. And the doctor said she'd never walk again. And she was in a wheelchair for 22 years. I used to fly out of Mobile and she would be getting on the flight with me going somewhere. And she was always so embarrassed because she had to hold the whole line up so she could get in on her wheelchair, get in her seat, and then the rest of the people could get on the plane. 
We had a revival in Mobile called the Miracle in Mobile. It was called the Bay of the Holy Spirit Revival. There was a young evangelist there named Nathan Morris who was from England. And he was preaching that night. And uh, she wheeled up in the wheelchair up on the platform and sang like an angel, an absolutely beautiful voice. And then when she was finished, she wheeled down off of the platform back on the front row. At the end of the service, he walked down to the front row, 27 years old, just a, a, a fearless young evangelist. And he looked at her and he said, what do you want? She said, I just want what God wants. He said, do you want to walk? She said, yes, I do. He said, then stand up. She said, I can't. He said, yes, you can. And so he grabbed one arm, and the pastor grabbed the other arm, and they helped her stand up. And it was so physically difficult for her to stand up, she began to sweat profusely. And so it was so physically demanding for her to even try this. And then the worship team came on the platform that they were saying, God, do a miracle for this woman. And they began to sing the songs of healing and the songs of deliverance and the songs of, of God's power and His blood. And as the worship team began to sing that, after about 30 minutes of worship, she lifted her right leg. And not a little, she lifted it way up and then sat it down. If you know anything about atrophy in those muscles, it's physically impossible for her to pick her leg up. She can't do that. But the place went nuts because the camera was right on her. There were about 2,000 people there in downtown Mobile, and, and the worship team started playing louder. About 30 minutes later, she lifted her left leg, and not just a little bit, she lifted it way up. Then about 15 minutes later, her right leg, and about 15 minutes, her left leg, about 10 minutes later, her right leg, about 10 minutes later, her left leg, about 5 minutes later, her right leg, about 5 minutes later, her left leg, and after two hours of worship and intercession, she started walking across the platform with nobody helping her. And the power of God, her name is Delia Knox. It's called the Miracle in Mobile. Uh, over 50 million people have watched this around the world. Go look it up on YouTube. And I saw her in Sam's Warehouse in Mobile last Christmas. And she was wearing six-inch stiletto high heel shoes. And she grabbed me by the hands and she said, I'm healed, Brother Johnny. I'm healed, Brother Johnny. And started dancing with me in Sam's warehouse. And now she's going around the world with one picture of her in a wheelchair and another of her standing on the platform, totally healed by the power of God. Come on, somebody. I'm just telling you. Am I in the pool right now? How did I get in here? I made a willful decision to step out of that realm to step over this realm. Write these three words down. Number one, we're going to have to pursue the pool. We're going to have to pursue the pool. Everybody say pursue. Number two, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to protect the pool. Everybody say protect. We're going to have to protect the pool. And here's the third one. We're going to have to practice. We're going to have to practice in the pool. We've got to pursue the pool. We've got to protect the pool. But then we can practice in this pool. And I can't wait to get to that. Number one, we got to pursue the pool. Everybody say pursue. Uh, I want you to understand, in Jeremiah chapter 29, if you've got your Bible, will you go over there with me? Jeremiah chapter 29, and beginning in verse 13. And, and I want us to read this scripture together. They've got it on the screen. Can everyone read this out loud? Uh, Jeremiah chapter, thir uh, chapter 29 and, and verse 13. It says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. That's not what they have up there. Let me read it to you. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 says, You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Can you say that with me? You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. The Word of God tells us. Let everybody look at this. Here's what God's saying to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. Do you know why Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet? Because God told him to prophesy to a nation that was rejecting God. Does that sound like America? He said, you go prophesy to them and tell them judgment is coming. But the people didn't want to listen to Jeremiah. And God came to him and said, Jeremiah, you tell them. They can find me if they will seek me, if they will seek me with some of their heart on Sunday morning. No, they can find me if they'll seek me, if they'll seek me with a little bit of their heart on Tuesday night. No, he said, you can find me if you seek after me, if you seek after me with all of your heart. And here's what God was saying. I'm not hidden from you. I'm making myself available to you. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. If you'll do the asking, if you'll do the seeking, it means we have to pursue him. 
and say, God, I want you. Because if you're not saying, God, I want you, I promise you, he's not coming close. My wife and I have been married for 39 years, and she's, outside of being born again, my wife is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I love her so much today, and I'm so grateful to God that she's in my life. But I, I was pursuing her when we first met because she was dating another guy, and, and, and he looked like Captain America. Anybody remember Captain America in the Avenger movies? Wave at me if you know who that is. He looked just like that guy. He was about 6'6". Six, six. He had shoulders about this wide, muscles on top of muscles, bright blonde hair, deep blue eyes, dark tan, looked like he walked out of a magazine, and she was dating him. But he didn't treat her very well. And so she, he, she broke up with him. And when she broke up with him, I moved in for the kill. And I, I, I wrote her a letter and I sprayed cologne on it because I saw that in a movie. And I thought that would get her attention. I'm sorry to say I, I actually did do that. I'm embarrassed to say that. But I sprayed cologne on it and I sent her the, the letter. And then I sent her some flowers and I called her on the phone. And finally the day came that she went out with me. And we dated for three and a half years. And we got married. We've been married for 39 years. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And Captain America lost. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because he didn't know how to pursue her. I was pursuing her heart. I was saying to her, Karen, I love you. Karen, I want you. I want to be with you. I want you to be with me. I don't need anybody else for the rest of my life. I want you. And do you know when we go to God the same way and say, God, I want you. God, I need you. He's no respecter of persons. And he says, I'll never turn a deaf ear to my children. He said, call out to me, and I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and unsearchable things. You can find God in your car when you leave the parking lot today. You can find God in your house before you eat lunch today. You can find God this afternoon when you're driving or in the community. But we have to be pursuing him, seeking after him so that we can find him for where he is. Yes? Years ago, I was a youth pastor in Mobile, and we had about uh, 300 students in our youth group at Knollwood Assembly of God many, many years ago. And we had a lot of students coming. But when I would take an offering for Speed the Light, which is our missions offering for our students, I would get $3.15. And there would be 300 students sitting there, and I'd get $3. And I was like, how do I get these knuckleheads to give? So I went in one night before they all got in there, and I taped dollar bills underneath all the chairs. A $1 bill, a $5 bill, a $10 bill, and a... $20 bill. I was a youth pastor. And so I taped money under all the chairs randomly all around the room. And when they came in that night, when we got to our offering, I said, we're going to play a game. Underneath the chair you're sitting in, there may be a one or a five or a 10 or a $20 bill. When I say go, whatever you can find is yours. On your mark, get set, go. Boom, the room exploded. They were diving over the chairs. They were pulling each other's hair. They were flipping chairs over. They were holding it up. I got a 10. I got a 5. I got a 20. I got a $1 bill. And while they were all on the floor, I said, stop. I said, when you begin to seek God the way you're seeking that dollar bill, you're going to be the kind of giver God wants you to be. And Pastor Aaron, we got the best offering we ever had. Now, it was my money, but we got the best offering that we had ever had. Because this generation has been taught, get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. It's all about me, 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 I, 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 get it all, climb to the top, step on anybody you have to, achieve your success. Yes, they haven't been taught how to work hard. They haven't been taught some of the things, you, the older generation in this room that we understand. But I want you to understand, if we will pursue God, he says, you can find me if you will seek me. If you'll seek me, come on, am I standing in it right now? Am I standing in it now? Come on, help me. Am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a choice to step out of that realm and into this realm. I can do it wherever I am. I can take it with me. And when everything is going wrong, I can complain and I can grumble or I can throw the pool down and say, Father, I need your help on my job. Father, I need your help in my marriage. Father, I need your help with my children. Father, I need your help in my body. I know the diagnosis, God, but, Lord, I need your help. And if we ask, it will be given to us. Hallelujah. Everybody smile and say, I love the little preacher. I still think he's a sweet little man. Some of you look at me like, do you always talk that fast? Yes, I do. All right. So we have to pursue. Everybody say pursue. 
Second thing I want to give you is if we're, if we're going to stay in the pool, we've got to protect the pool. Everybody say protect. We've got to protect this, this relationship that we have. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. They're going to put it on the screen. Can you put that up there for me, guys? Come on, can we read this out loud, this first verse? Come on, read it with me. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Stay right there for a second. We as Assembly of God, Pentecostal people, we love that verse. That it's possible that we can res resist the devil. We can resist who? The devil, and he has to flee from us. That Satan himself and the demons of hell, it is possible that we can resist that and he has to flee from us. Not because he's scared of me. Listen, Satan is not scared of me. I'm five foot eight pounds. All right. It's way too many, all right? I'll let you figure that out another time. Satan is not scared of me. But he's terrified of Jesus who lives in me. Yes? See, God takes ordinary people. Like that pretty little girl right there with your headband on. Will you stand up? Yeah. Yeah, that pretty girl right there. How old are you? A 16-year-old knucklehead that the power of God comes on and God touches with his glory and his love and his power. And Satan is not terrified of her. She's a little bitty scrunt, all right? But he is terrified of God who lives inside of her. Do you love Jesus? Are you going to serve him with your whole heart? Are you going to listen to country music? Okay, good. We'll cast that devil out. All right. Can, can God use a young lady like this to do miracles? Come on. Can somebody give her a great big hand? You can sit down. Listen. There's a key in that verse. Look at it if you would. It says, submit yourselves to God. We have to do the submitting part. That God, I'm asking you to come and empower me so that I can resist the devil. And, and how many parents are in here? Hold your hand up if you're a parent. Okay? If your children hold their hands up to you and say, Mommy, pick me up. Daddy, pick me up. Do you look at them and say, Shut up. Go away. I don't want to see you again. Is that what you say? No. If, you, if, you, if that is what you say, we need to pray for you. All right? But what we do is we pick them up and we hug them and we hold them and we do everything we can to help them, whatever it is that they need. I remember when I was little, I'd go to my mama because I figured out I, I couldn't get much from my daddy, but I could get anything I wanted from my mama. And I'd go up there and I'd say, Mama, I love you. Mama, you're the best. Mama, you th I just thank you for all you do for me. And she said, what do you want? And when I asked her, she gave it to me. Come on. If we'll submit to God, He delights in helping us. And He wants to give you power so that you can live for God. See, I wish I was like these young people right here. I wish I could be in high school again. Knowing what I know now, I get the biggest Jesus t-shirt I could find. And, and my grandma's 45-pound edition Bible. You remember those big 45-pound Bibles? And I'd walk up into the halls of the schools singing, Yes, Jesus loves me. You're going to hell. Yes, Jesus because the worst thing they can do is beat me up. The absolute worst thing they can do is kill me. If they do, there's no way I can lose. I can resist who? And he has to flee from me. Now, here's the qualification. Will you go to verse 8? Read this one with me. Look at what it says in verse 8. Come read it loud. Come on. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Here's what everybody say, uh-oh. This is the qualification for the power to resist the devil. We have to cleanse our hands and purify our hearts. That if we're going to see the power of God, Aniston and Ozark will never, ever, ever be changed in this region. Did I call the right region out? Oxford. Oxford. I was just in Ozark. Oxford and Aniston will never be changed by us sitting in this building. Come on, help me now. This region's never going to change with us just sitting in here. What they're waiting for is us to show them there's a superior way to live, and it's in the name of Jesus. There's a superior way to live, and it's in the pool. That I don't go out and get drunk. I don't go out and do drugs. I don't go out and do the things everybody else does. The way I find help when I have a problem is I go away to the pool of his presence. Everything that I need is right here. I have to wash my hands. I have to purify my heart. You double-minded. A, a teenager came up to his dad one day. That punched that guy right there with the long hair. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Will you stand up for me? Tell him to stand up. Stand up real quick. Yeah. Will you stand up real quick? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's still half asleep. All right. But, but uh, there was this boy kind of like you. He had long hair, and he went to his daddy. He said, "Daddy, uh, I, 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 I need, I need you to buy me a new car." He was about 17 years old. He said, "Well, son, I'll buy you a new car." He said, but you got long hair. He said, cut that hair. 
your room's a mess. Clean your room up and get your grades up. They're not very good, and I'll buy you a new car. So Brother Longhair went away from his daddy. He went away, came back several weeks later, and he said, Daddy, he said, my room is spotless. Daddy, I got straight A's in all my classes. He said, yeah, but you still got that long hair. He said, cut your hair, and I'll buy you a new car. He said, well, Daddy, I've been reading the Bible. Everybody in the Bible had long hair, too. He said, yeah, but you also found out they walked everywhere they went. Hallelujah. So go cut your hair. You can sit down, Brother Long Hair. All right, okay. Listen, I want you to know we have to meet the condition to get the promise. If we want to resist the devil, I've got to wash my hands. I've got to purify my heart. Am I standing in it now? Come on, am I standing in it now? I hope tonight when you go to bed you're going to say, am I standing in it now? Am I standing in it now? Am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a decision. Here's the third one. I've got to pursue the pool. I've got to protect the pool. Because, see, let's just say it like this. If the city of Anniston and, and, and Oxford decided today they were going to pour the sewage of the city into your pool, would you let them do it for an hour? Come on, why not? Oh, 30 minutes? Come on, 10 minutes. 30 seconds? Why would you not let them pour that into your clean, pure water? Because it's disgusting. It's polluted. It's full of disease. It smells bad. And yet, I want you to understand that many people, this is the way they're trying to live. One foot in the pool and one foot outside the pool. And I'm just going to tell you, it's a very devastating way to live because there'll be just enough God to take the edge off, but no power that the enemy will have to bow down to you. Come on, do you still love me? Anybody know the story of the guy named Samson? If you know the story about Samson, you ever seen a big a caricature of Samson? It's usually a guy with big muscles. I don't believe that's an accurate picture of the guy named Samson. The Bible says they didn't know the secret of his strength. Yes? And the secret was when he was a little boy, he made a, a vow that he would never cut his hair. And it would be a picture of the covenant that he had with God, that he would always honor the Lord. But he fell in love with the beautiful Delilah. And people say, well, how do you know she was beautiful? Well, I can't imagine the devil using some ugly hag. All right? She was probably very, very pretty. She was probably very appealing. And she got his attention. And she said, tell me the secret of your strength. And he lied to her. He said, tie my hair in wet cords. Tie my hair in new cords. Tie my hair in wet braids. I'll be as weak as any other man. And she said, why won't you tell me the secret of your strength? And he said, cut my hair. I'll be as weak as any other man. And this, you can read this in Judges 17. His head was in her lap, the Bible says. And she said, that's a good boy. You lay your head down. Out come the scissors. Snip, snip, snip. She cuts his hair off and she says, the Philistines are upon you. The Philistines are upon you. And it's the saddest scripture in the Bible to me because he said, I'll go out and defeat the Philistines like I have every other time. And the Bible says, but he did not know that the glory of God had departed from him. And the Bible says they gouged his eyes out, they bound him, made him grind in the meal. Yes? I want, you to, I want you to feel this. They stuck an instrument into his skull, and they gouged his eyes out of his head, and he lost the ability to see because he was trying to live it both ways. One hand with God and one hand with Delilah. We can't have it both ways. Yes? You're going to live a miserable experience. What God wants us to do is step all the way over into his presence and say, God, I'm going to guard what I watch. I'm going to guard what I touch. I'm going to guard where my feet go. I'm going to guard what's on my computer. I'm going to guard who I hang out with. I'm going to protect this because you wouldn't let the sewage of the city be poured in your pool. But why do we watch the sewage of our culture and listen to the sewage of our culture and still think we're going to have the power of God? We've got to pursue it, but we've got to protect it. Here's the last one we got to practice in the pool. Everybody say practice. Let me read a scripture to you. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Can, we re can you read this one out loud with me? I love it when you read out loud. Come on, let's read this one together. For this reason I remind you to fan and to flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7, look at what he says. In verse 7, he says, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The King James says, Power, love, and a sound mind. Look at me. Before we pray, does America need a sound mind right now? If America's ever needed a sound mind, we need it right now. I mean, why would demons? California last month just voted that a student has to be 16 years old to get a tattoo. But they can have a sex change, and the government will pay for it at the age of 12 years old, and they do not have to notify their parents. 
that was just voted into law in California. They're appealing it to the Supreme Court, but it'll take years for the Supreme Court to hear it. Only a demon could think that way. For the spirit God gave us gives us power and love and a sound mind. And it was imparted to us through the laying on of hands. Paul was telling Timothy, you've received a gift, so fan into flame that gift. Can you stand up, sweet lady, right here? Can you stand up? How many know that lady has a gift to sing? Come on, somebody. That the song of the Lord is just bursting in her heart and, and God just flowing through her and, and as you're singing the song of the Lord. Pastor, would you stand up? That How many of you wish you could play the piano like that? That he has a gift to play the piano and to lead in worship. And, and it's a true gift that you have certain gifts. That, that brother back there in the very back with the, the beard, will you stand up back there in the very back corner? Yeah. That he has gifts and abilities to do things that I will never do. And maybe I have gifts and abilities to do things you'll never do. And, and Sister Blonde here, can you stand up? Yeah. And, and, and you have gifts and abilities that you can't do all the things that she does. But she can't do all the things that you do. And look around this room. If we're all standing up, stand up, sweetheart. Come on. That, that young lady right there, there's such a sweet spirit in this child. Do y'all see that? Uh, people say she's sweet only when she's asleep, all right? But I believe she's sweet all the time. And look around this room at this sweet girl and that man and th that sweet woman and that sweet woman and that man. That all of us standing here have different gifts and if we're not using those gifts, they never get utilized. And Paul told Timothy, fan into flame the gift of God. Because you didn't learn how to play the piano the first time you played. You had to practice and practice and practice. You didn't sing like you do today just the first time you did it. You had to keep practicing and practicing and practicing. You didn't get that sweet just by being just a normal knuckle-headed teenager. You had to practice that. Man of God, you had to practice what you do. You had to practice what you do, woman of God, because the more we do those things, the better we we get at those things. Can you give these people a great big hand? And you can sit down. Pastor, will you come to the piano? I'm going to ask Pastor to come to the piano because that's the sign the service is over. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to show you this. The more you do anything, the better you get at it. Okay? I, 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 how many ladies in here have ever, ever worn lipstick before? Hold your hand up if you've ever worn lipstick. How many of you were the world's greatest woman in the history of the world at putting on lipstick the very first time you did it? No, I have three sisters, and I remember when they were little girls, they had it all over the place. But I see you women drive now. and You can drive with one hand, and you can whip that lipstick out with the other hand, and you can roll it right in the lines even without looking. Because you've done that so many times, you could do it in the dark. Is that right? How many men in here play football, baseball, or basketball? Hold your hand up so I can see you. How many of you were the world's greatest football, baseball, or basketball player in the history of the world the very first time you played? Lie. All right, no, but the more you do it, did it, the better you get, okay? I know I can throw a football 50 yards, and I can still do that at 60 years of age because I found out throwing a football is not about strength. It's about technique. And I've taught hundreds of boys how to learn how to throw a football. And if you've got one, we'll go do it in the parking lot after the service. Because I've done it again and again and again and again. The more we cook, the better we cook. Yes? Ho hopefully. The more we work on cars, the better we work on cars. Yes? The, the more we work with computers, the better we work with computers. Listen. The more we pray, the better we pray. The more we worship, the better we worship. The more we read the Word of God, the more we understand the Word of God. And I have found the best way to practice the gifts of God is by telling other people about Jesus. Because it stirs up the gift of God in me. The night I got saved, I was 16 years old, sitting on the back row of Moffat Road Baptist Church in Mobile. And the only reason I was there, i got to be honest, is because a pretty girl invited me to go to church. You understand. And so the only reason that I went is because I was sitting, got to sit next to her. And she was so beautiful. And she said, she saw the life, what alcohol was doing to me. My family was falling apart. And I was in trouble. And she invited me to church. And she and I and so I happily went. I wasn't listening to the pastor at all. I was writing notes to her the whole time the pastor was preaching. Then all of a sudden the pastor said, If you don't know Jesus, you're gonna go to hell. And then he said this. But God loves you, and God wants to help you. I, I'd never heard that before. All I ever heard was God was mad at me because of the way I was living, that God would judge me and that I would not make it. I never heard of God's love. 
I said, if that's true, God loves me and God wants to help me, then I want that. And I got up from the back row and I came to the front. And nobody was laughing at me. They gave me a standing ovation because they all knew my family. And they knew what a mess my life was. And, and I got saved on July 22nd, 1979. Next month will be my 44th birthday in the Lord. When I came to the altar that night, the pastor met me at the altar, and he said, boy, he called me boy. He said, boy, you got saved tonight. He said, you didn't just pray. He said, boy, you got saved tonight. He said, on your way home, tell somebody about Jesus. And I couldn't believe the pastor of this 800-member Baptist church was talking to me. I was just starstruck. And I said, well, I guess that's what I got to do because the pastor told me to tell somebody about Jesus on the way home. So I stopped at a 7-Eleven on the way home because they had banana flavor ices. Anybody like ices? Oh, I love, they had banana flavor ices. And I always went in there to get an icy. And there was a woman uh, that was in there, that, that lady right there, you kind of remind me of her. Uh, she was in there working and nobody else was in there. So I thought, this is perfect. I can tell her what God just did in my life and, and, and I won't make a mess out of this and I won't embarrass her or me. And I got really nervous. Who knows what I'm talking about? I wanted to tell her what God had done in my life, but I got, I, I'd never, I'd just been saved for 30 minutes. And so I, I didn't know how you did this. So I walked up and I was really, really nervous. And I looked at her and I said, could, 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 could I please have an icy? And I was shaking. And she said, man, you really want one bad, don't you? And I just blew it. And I thought, well, that's not how you do this. And I started to walk out after I paid for my icy. And God stopped me at the door and said, no, turn around right now. Go back and tell her you just got saved. Go back and tell her you're not drinking anymore. Go back and tell her you just gave your life to me. It's the first time I ever heard God's voice this way. So I turned around, went back, got all my faith and boldness up. I walked up to the counter, and, and, and I was still really, really nervous. And I said, could I ask you a, a question? And she said, yes. I said, do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? And she said, well, yes, I sure do. And I was like, thank God. All right, because I didn't know what you did after that. But it felt so good to tell somebody what God had done in my life. And I almost floated out of that 7-Eleven. She high-fived me and said, that's so awesome. You're telling people about Jesus. The next afternoon, the pastor called me at my house. He said, boy, he said, you got saved last night. He said, listen, can you come to the church and help me? We're going to go knock on doors and tell people about Jesus. And I still don't know how he got my phone number. And, and, and I said, I'll be there. He said, meet me at 6 o'clock. I got there at 530 he pulled in right at 6 o'clock. We had a word of prayer. We went right across the street from the church to a neighborhood, kind of like the apartments next door to your, build, your building. And we knocked on the first door, and this great big guy about 6'6 six, six, opened the door. He said, what do you want? And he said, hey, I'm Dan Springfield. This is Johnny Jernigan. We want to tell you about Jesus and what Jesus can do in your life. He said, you get the blankety-blank off my front porch. I don't want to hear about your blankety-blank God, and don't you ever blankety-blank ever come back to my house again. And he used about every curse word that you can think of in about 30 seconds and slammed the door in our face. And that was my introduction to evangelism. And the pastor said, Johnny, that was really harsh. He said, man, it's not, not usually that bad. He said, if you want to, we'll just go back to the church. And all I can tell you is I knew God was changing my heart. I didn't want alcohol anymore. I didn't want a party anymore. I knew that God was changing my life. I said, let's go to the next house. So we went to the next house. We knocked on the door, and a lady about this tall and about as big around as she was tall, she opened the door, and she said, yes. He said, hey, I'm Dan Springfield. This is Johnny Jernigan. We want to tell you about Jesus and what Jesus can do in your life. She said, come on in. And we walked in her house and sat down, and she brought us a chocolate chip cookie that was about that thick. It had massive chocolate chips that had melted and run all through the cookie. It was, you know, steaming hot. And, and then she brought us some iced tea out of the, re, the refrigerator. And the glass she had put in the, in, in the freezer it had frost on the glass. And she pulled us a cold glass of iced tea and gave us a chocolate chip cookie. It was, it was about that thick. Had massive chocolate chips in it that melted all through the cookie. Who wants one right now? Hallelujah. All right. And so the pastor began to talk to her about Jesus. And he was reading the Roman road to her. And then he shocked me and he looked at me and said, Johnny, tell her what Jesus did in your life last night. And I'd never done that before, and I got really nervous again, and, and I didn't know what to say, so I said, I'm not getting drunk anymore. I gave my life to Jesus last night, and that's literally all I knew how to say. And the pastor said, isn't that great this young man's out here telling people this? She said, that's so good. And this woman was a Catholic. She knew a lot about Catholicism, 
She just didn't know Jesus. And the pastor said, would you like to know Jesus the way we've talked about him tonight? And does anybody remember Woody Woodpecker? Anybody remember Woody Woodpecker? If you, have, you can find it on YouTube if you've never seen it. And she, she prayed to receive Jesus, and I'll never forget it. She jumped off of her couch and started laughing like Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> Just bouncing all over her living room because she was so excited to be born again. She died about six years ago, and I did her funeral. And I was there the night she got saved. And I was there to celebrate the day she went home to be with Jesus. Within 24 hours of my salvation experience, I saw the gospel work twice. Once in the home of a person that I'd never met before, and once at a 7-Eleven with a woman that I, was, I took a chance and told her that I got saved. And you know what happened in both situations? I just stepped over in the pool. Am I in it right now? Am I in it right now? Come on, am I in it right now? How did I get in here? I made a decision to step out of that realm and step over in this realm. I'm telling you, God wants to use you to transform Anniston, and he wants to transform this region for the glory of God, that Oxford will never be the same if the people of God will say, I'm taking the pool with me, and I'm going to the ball games, I'm going to school, I'm going to work wherever I go, and I'm just going to stay in the pool, and I'm going to start telling them what God can do in their life. Yes. Will you lay your hand on your heart with me? Come on. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for these amazing people. Thank you for our wonderful pastors, God, that you sent here two and a half years ago, and that, God, that they are, are, are raising up a standard in, in this region for the glory of God. And I'm asking, God, that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see, and that, Lord, that you would anoint us, oh, God, today to say, God, I want to stay in the pool. I want to stay in the pool in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Look at me. I wasn't going to tell you this, but I really feel like I need to real quick. Then we're going to pray. My daddy told me when I was a little boy, don't play football in the house. And how many of you know sometimes 10-year-old boys do things they're not supposed to do? And my dad was outside cutting the grass one day, and I saw the football over on the couch. And I reached over and grabbed it, and I threw it to my little brother, but I threw it too hard. He was only six years old. It went through his hands and broke my dad's favorite lamp. And I mean, it shattered it. And I knew I was in trouble. My dad was going to whip me. So I told my baby brother, I said, quick, Scotty, go lock the door. So my brother went over and locked the door, and we started picking up the glass. A few minutes later, the lawnmower cut off, and my dad came and tried to come in the house, and he said, open the door, boys. And, and I knew I could not open that door. I said, Daddy, I can't open this door. He said, open the door, boys. I said, Dad, I knew what was, what was coming. I said, Daddy, I cannot open this door. He said, whatever you've done is going to be twice as bad if you don't open this door right now. Anybody ever heard that voice before? And I opened the door. And my daddy came in, and he saw the football sitting in the middle of all the glass. And he pulled his belt off. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he whipped me that day. You want to know why my daddy beat me that day? Because I opened the door. If I'd have kept that door locked, he'd still be outside. I'm just telling you. I opened the door. You want to know why some of you here today are losing? Because you've opened the door to the enemy. God's saying, close the door to the enemy. Step into the pool with me and everything you need, I can give you. Will you bow your heads? Father, I'm asking that you would do what I can't do. You would begin to speak to hearts, to young men and young women and boys and girls and God, uh, adults in this room. And God, you would release what you want to release in this house today. And that God, something would be imparted with the vision you've given Pastor Aaron and Pastor Amy. In Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if nobody's told you they love you today, let me tell you, Jesus loves you. He's not mad at you. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. But he loves you too much to leave you where you are. And I need Christians to pray right now. If you're walking with God, pray. Somebody's life is in the balance here today. And you may never get another chance to hear this. You may never be this close to the kingdom of God again. The Bible promises a lot. It just doesn't promise tomorrow. You may never get another chance. Ask yourself this question all over this room. If you died today, do you know that you know that you know that you'd be in heaven with Jesus? It's an important question. Every person is going to have to answer this question whether they think they will or not. See, you can fool me today because I'm pretty easy to fool. You can fool Pastor Aaron. You can fool Pastor Amy. You can fool your friends. You can fool your neighbors. You can even fool the police. But I can tell you this, you'll never fool God. And he's knocking on the door of someone's heart in this room and saying, I have a better way for you. 
come to me and get in the pool of my presence and I'll show you how you can win every day of your life. With every head bowed, every eye closed, ask yourself, God, are you talking to me? You're the only person I'm talking to right now. You're the only person I'm talking to. No matter who's on your right and left, no matter who's in front of you and behind you, ask yourself right now, God, are you talking to me? And if you're here and you say, you know what, Pastor Johnny, I'm not where I should be with God. There are things in my life that are wrong. And I'm not sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. But I want to know that. Will you please pray for me today? They're screaming in hell right now, begging us to listen. It's too late for those in hell. It's not too late for you and me in this room. I don't care how many drinks you've had, how many things you've done wrong, how many mistakes you've made, how many drugs you've taken. God says, come to me and I will give you rest. Pray, Christians. Young lady, young man, mom or dad, guess here today. If you're hearing the sound of my voice and you say, Brother Johnny, I'm not where I should be with God. There are things in my life that are wrong and I'm not sure if I died today, I would go to heaven. But I want to get closer to God today. I'm tired of being the way I've been. I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I know I need to get closer to Jesus today. I, I want you to know you can fool everybody else, but you can't fool God. And he's knocking on your heart's door right now and saying, come to me. Come to me and I'll give you life. Come to me and I'll give you life. If that's you, young lady, young man, mom or dad, or guest here today, and you say, that's me, you know what? I know I can fool everybody else, but I can't fool God. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to play games with my eternity. It's almost too late. It's almost too late. It's almost too late. If that's you anywhere in this room, from the back row to the front, no matter who's on your right and left or who's in front of you and behind you, if you say, I'm not where I should be with God and I need to get closer to Him today, include me in that final prayer. Pray for me, Brother Johnny, no matter who's around you. If you say, I need to get closer to Jesus today, pray for me, Brother Johnny. When I count to three, raise your hand right now. Shove it in the devil's throat. Here we go. One, two, three. Raise it now. Get my attention all over this room. Anybody, anybody in this room? Brother Johnny, I need to get closer to Jesus. Pray for me. I'm going to ask one more time. Pray, Christians. Maybe you should have raised your hand, but you were afraid of what somebody might think. If you didn't raise your hand a moment ago, I beg of you, please don't leave this place without making things right with God. If there's an, even an inkling in your heart that things are not right with you and God, I would leave this building. If that's you, I want to ask one more time. If you didn't raise your hand, but you know you should have, I need to get closer to Jesus today. Include me in that final prayer. I'm not where I should be with God. I don't want to go to hell. I need to get closer to Jesus. If you didn't raise it a moment ago, but you know you should have, raise it right now. Shove it in the devil's throat. Here we go. One, two, three. Raise it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad I asked again. Anybody else? Raise it now with these other five that just raise their hands. Come on, anybody else, raise it now. Father, I've done everything you told me to do. Now, Lord, give the increase. Help me decrease. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. Can everybody stand with me, please? Nobody leaving for just a moment. Pastor will dismiss us in just a minute. Hallelujah. Those of you that raise your hands, I know who you are. You know who you are. God knows who you are, and the devil knows who you are. The first step is always to acknowledge God. Jesus said, if you acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. Forty-four, Almost 44 years ago, next month, I was sitting on the back row of that Baptist church in Mobile, and I came to the front, and nobody was laughing at me. Can I tell you? Nobody's going to laugh at you in this room. We're going to give you a standing ovation today. Is that right, church? Because we know what God can do in your life. I'd like everybody in this building to turn and look at someone close to you and say, if you need to go get closer to Jesus today, I'll go up there with you. Would you just turn and ask somebody that question? It could change somebody's future. It could change somebody's direction. Now look at me if you would. Those that raise their hands, will you take the second bold step? And if you're serious, you'll do this. If you're not, this is just a religious thing. But if you want to get in the pool, every person that raised their hand, take the second bold step and say, I don't want to play games with my future. I want to make sure I'm in the presence of God. Every person that raised their hand, when I count to three, come stand right up here with me. Here we go. One, two, three. Will you clap for them while they come right now? Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting for you. Come on. Will you clap for them? Come on, guys. Come on. I'm waiting for you. Come on. Will you clap for them till they get here? Come on. Will you clap for them? Come right up here with me, guys. Come right up here with me. Hallelujah. Just stand right there. Get shoulder to shoulder. Can I get the rest of the church to come up here and stand behind them now? Can we build a wall of prayer behind them? Can everybody just step out of your seat with me now? And we're going to close in a word of prayer right here in the altar. Just come and just stand right around them. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Can everybody just step out of your seat? And if it's hard to stand, just come sit on the front row. And we're going to close with a prayer around this altar today. In the name of the Lord. And then if you have a family member or a friend up here, come stand close to them. Hallelujah. Come on, can you move in real close? Sister Red Shirt, can you come up here with this young lady? And, and Brother Beard, will you come with her? Hallelujah. Yeah. Brother Goatee, can you come with her? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I got names for everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you come and stand right here next to this sweet young lady? And I, can I just get you to come and stand right next to this young man? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me, church. Everybody, look at me, boys. Look at me, sweet girl. Look at me. 44 years ago, I stood where you're standing right now. I don't deserve to stand up here today. I should be dead. God protected me so many nights when I should have never made it home. And he gave me a second chance. I don't deserve to be up here. But God loved me enough that standing in a room just like this, almost 44 years ago, I gave my life to Jesus. And God changed my whole life. I led my dad to Christ. I led my mother to Christ. I led my brother to Christ. He's a Baptist preacher. Y'all pray for him. Then I led two of my sisters to Christ. And God changed everything for me. And in this moment, the reason I wanted you to pray for her is because you look back over your life and say, God, I wish I could go back and change some things. But God said, I've set you free. And the hand of the Lord is on you, woman of God, for miracles that you don't even realize. And the hand of God is on you. You know what I'm telling you is true. And you've felt his hand. You've felt God close to you. you and is that your husband that was back there? I never know, so I have to ask. And so y'all were sitting real close together. But God put his hand on you to stand with people just like this and say, here's an answer. And it's more than just standing in a church and praying a prayer. People pray in every religion. But this is a beginning point of saying, Pastor Aaron, I want to walk with God. I want to walk with God. I don't want to play games. I want to stay in the pool. Hallelujah. Am I in it now? So you made a choice to get in here with me today, even sleeping through half my sermon. But that's okay. I had you stand up just in time. And today God's saying, I can show you what I have for you in your future. And we love you so much. And we're so proud of you. Is that right, church? Are we proud of them? And what God's going to do in your heart. I want you to, I want you to bow your heads with me, all these boys and these girls. And I'd like everybody in the church to pray this prayer with them. And would everybody pray this out loud so nobody be embarrassed? Can we all pray this out loud? Come on, so nobody's embarrassed. Everybody pray this out loud with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I know it was my sin that nailed you on the cross. And I'm sorry, Lord. I know I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. So I say with my mouth that Jesus is the Christ. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I give you my past, all of my mistakes, all of my hurt, all of my pain, all of my sin. I give it all to you, Jesus. I give you my future, everything I will ever become. And I start over today, a child of God. And I receive you now as my only Lord, as my only hope, as my only way to heaven. I want to stay in the pool. I want to stay in the pool. Let the devil hear you. Come on, say it. I want to stay in the pool. Today, God, I give you my life. Live in me for the rest of my days in Jesus' name. Now, God, come on, stretch your hands toward them. Father, break every word curse. Break every soul tie. Break every generational curse. Break every genetic curse. Loose them powers of hell. Today is a new beginning in their life that they're starting over today and saying, God, I'm going to be what you want me to be. I'm going to live how you want me to live. I'm going to stay with my pastor, and I'm going to become the man or the woman of God that you have called me to be. So do it in them today, God. Do it in them today, and let today be a new beginning for them. In Jesus' name. Satan, they no longer belong to you. They're, today is a new beginning. There's a new name written down in heaven. And we believe for your touch over their life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can you give them another standing ovation, church? Come on. Hallelujah. Let me encourage you to do three things. Number one, get baptized in water. 
pastor's doing a baptismal. Let me encourage you to get baptized in water. Even if you've been baptized before, maybe it didn't work the first time. All right? didn't work for me the first time because I didn't understand water baptism. Dying in a watery grave to rise up in resurrection life. So uh, get baptized in water. Second thing, go home and have a house cleaning. If there's something on your computer, get it off. If there's sites you're going to, ask for accountability. If there's something in your house, drugs or drinks, flush it, burn it, trash it, get rid of it. Demons are attached to it, and it will hurt you, and it will pull you back. Third thing is if you're in a relationship that's not a godly relationship, the pastors will help you, and they'll show you how to navigate that. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. And we're so proud of you. Can we give them one more standing ovation? <laughs> Brother Goatee, can you come up here with your wife? Hallelujah. Can you come up here with me? I, I know, I know it, it, this may be a little bit different, but I just want to pray over you. Can you all join hands together? Hallelujah. Man, I'm so proud of you that you're in the house of the Lord today. And the Lord sent you here today to tell you that you're big in the natural. When I walked, you, watched, saw you walk in, I thought it looked like the Hulk. All right? You're big in the natural. But God wants to make you big in the spirit. That the strength of God would come upon you. And that you would stay in this pool. And the presence of God will be there. There's a song in you that the Lord is going to use. And you're going to sing to the Lord. And His presence is going to come. I don't know if you'll do it on this platform. I don't know if you'll do it in your bedroom. I don't know if you'll do it in your car. But sing, woman of God. Because every time you sing, something changes. And God hears the song of the Lord coming out of you. And the Lord said as you join hands together standing on this platform, He said, stay in the pool. Stay in the pool. And everything you need is going to be found there. And God's going to use you in this hour to draw people to the house of God. You've always wanted God to use you. And He's going to use you in this hour, man of God, in a way that you've never been used before as you stay with your pastor. Because the, there's a hunger in you. There's a hunger in you saying, God, do something more. God, do something more. And he heard you when you said that. And if you'll stay with that pastor and you'll stay in here, you'll sing the song of the Lord. God's going to use the two of you in a supernatural way. Will you stretch your hands toward them, church? Come on, can you pray for them? Father, I thank you, Lord. Pastor, will you come lay your hands on them? Father, I thank you for it, for the anointing. Pastor Amy, will you come up here? We believe for the anointing over this precious couple. And we believe for the power of God that is alive in them. And that, God, that you're stirring something in their heart. And saying, God, there's more, there's more, there's more. So let a hungering come alive in them. And that, God, that you're going to use them for the glory of your kingdom. Let them stay in the pool. Let them stay in the pool. Let them stay in the pool. And let your glory flow on them and in them and through them. In Jesus' name. Can that sweet girl back there, can you run up here with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Is that mama or grandmama? Can you come up here with her? Hallelujah. I never know, so I have to ask. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And y'all just stay right here if you're okay. Can you come up here with me? Hallelujah. And see, the reason you weep is because you know he's real. And he said, tell you that when you feel alone, and the enemy even recently has said nobody cares, it'll never change. It'll never get better. You've been hearing the lies of the devil that told you you're not good enough, and you're not pretty enough, and you're not smart enough, and you don't have enough, and you'll never be enough. Have you heard that? But God said to tell her today that she's beautiful and she's talented and she's gifted. And I've anointed her to be a servant in the house of the Lord. And there's supernatural things God wants to do through you, precious girl. And he said, tell her she's good enough. Tell her she's my daughter. Tell her I'm holding her in my hand and I'm going to be with her. What is your name? Im Imogen? Stretch your hands toward Imogen. Come here, Pastor Amy. Come here, red shirt. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for Imogen. Come on, church, right now. Will you just pray for the glory of God to come upon this precious girl? And Father, I pray, God, that as these tears roll down her face today, oh God, she'll say, God, I want to stay in the pool. I want to stay in the pool. I want to stay in the pool. And God, would you just stir your gifts up within her? And she'll walk out of here saying, I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. And I'm going to be what God wants me to be. And I'm going to be in God's hand. And Father, would you touch this household? Would you bless this mama? Would you bless this house? And that they'll know, look at me, woman of God. You're, I want you to know the enemies lied to you and said you're not a good mama. And God, you've made mistakes and you can't do it. But God said, break that lie off of you today. And he said, pursue him, pursue him, pursue him. And everything that you need, woman of God, God's saying, I'm changing not just this girl, but I'm changing your household. And there's a new anointing that's coming to you. 
your house. There's a new anointing that's coming to your house, and God's going to flow through you. Come on, church. Stretch your hands toward them. Pray over them right now. Father, stir your anointing up within them. Let your glory be released over them. Let your power be released over them, and bless this household today. And let them walk in the things, God, that you have for her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Look at me. Your life's not behind you. It's in front of you. Your life's not behind you. You tell the devil, I'm going to live. Come on, say it. I'm going to live. Come on. Come over here with me. Come here. Step right over here. Come on. Come on. Step right in there. Come on. Stretch your hands toward her, church. Can you believe right now? Red shirt, will you hold her other hand? Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that she'll remember this moment that when she stands in this simple little swimming pool, she'll say, God, I'm going to stay in your glory. I'm going to stay in your glory. I'm going to stay in your glory in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout to the Lord for this precious young girl? Hallelujah. Can I get that couple? Y'all are together, right? Can, are y'all together? Can y'all come up here with me? <laughs> 51 years, you better hold on to her. Hallelujah. 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 Can you come up here with me? At the beginning of the service, when I walked to the back road this morning, and I just walked up to you, I saw the glory of God that's on you. And there's a teaching anointing on you, man of God. There's a teaching anointing on you to teach others the things of God. And God is going to use the two of you to teach this young generation. Don't be afraid of them. Embrace them. And God is going to use you. God's going to use you. These boys need you. Is that right? Come on, is that right, Pastor? Is that right, church? That these boys need these men of God that are in this church. And the enemy's tried to lie to you and tell you that there's no place for you. But man of God, we need you. You make us better. You make us better. And woman of God, as y'all hold hands together, 51 years, is that what you said? That it's not just going to be him, but it's going to be the two of you. And God is going to use you to teach younger ones about the things of God. And they're going to hear the word of the Lord in you. He put his hand on you a long time ago. A long time ago. And there's been some things that have pulled you to the side. But God said, run, man of God. Run, man of God. And be everything God's called you to be. God's still where he, back there where he first said it. And it's as fresh as it was that day. So run back, man of God, and do what God's called you to do. Teach, man of God. Teach, man of God. Teach, man of God. And show them how to be free. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands toward them, church. Come on, can you believe? Father, in the name that's above every name, at the name of Jesus. Anoint this precious couple. Anoint this precious couple. And Father, let them break the lies of the devil off of them that would lie to them and say they have no place. But God, we need them. They make us better. Stir your gift up within them, O oh God. Stir your gift up within them, O oh God. Stir your gift up within them, O oh God. And that they'll go to these young ones and say, this is what the Lord says. Anoint them, empower them, strengthen them, O oh God, to teach others, Lord. We believe for the release of that and the anointing of that in Jesus' name. Go back to when the Lord first spoke to you, man of God. Go back to when the Lord said, here's what I'm calling you to do. And pick it up again and hold it up to God and say, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do what you told me to do, God. I'm going to do what you told me to do. And God's going to help the two of you to walk this out in these days. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. When I walk back there, I sense the glory of God on you. Hallelujah. And God can do all things through you. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? We need you. We need you. How, can somebody give them, come on, can you clap for them right now? <laughs> Sister Blonde Hair, can you come up here? You knew I was going to call you. Hallelujah. Come up here. Hallelujah. Sister Red Shirt, can you come over here and just hold her hand? Step in there with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I had you stand up a while ago, the Lord said, I'm washing her. I'm washing her. I'm washing her. And there's an anointing in you, woman of God, that the Lord is wanting to awaken to new levels. He wants to awaken to new levels. You're a leader. You're an influencer. You know it. People listen to you. You say things. You say, do this and do that. And I don't even know what you do. But you do th say things, and people listen to that. And they say, okay, that's what we're going to do. And the Lord hasn't just influenced you for a, a business or a social thing or anything else. He's anointed you to be an influence for the kingdom of God. God. I see a trail 
of women behind you running into the house of God. I see a trail of women behind you running into the house of God. And they're going to follow you in here. Don't be afraid to talk to them about the things of God. Open your mouth because the Lord has put you in the place of influence so that you can tell them what God can do and how God can do it in them. He's done it in you. It would have been a lot easier for you to quit a long time ago. You've been in some hard places and you've been through some hard bumps in life and it would have been a lot easier to quit but you didn't quit and you won today because you got to the house of God and the Lord said you tell her I want her to stay in this pool I want her to stay in this pool and there's going to be a trail of women behind you who are going to come to the house of God Hallelujah, Pastor Amy. Will you come lay your hands on her? Come on, stretch your hands toward her, church. Can you believe right now? Father, anoint this woman of God. Use her in this community that she and Sister Amy and the ladies of this church will see something erupt among women in this region. Come on, ladies, hold your hands up and say, do it through us as women, God. Do it through us as women, God. Every woman in this room, hold your hands up and say, God, do it through us. Do it through us, God, that we'll go get them and we'll bring them and we'll influence them and will tell them of the things of God. So, Lord, do it through the ladies of this church. Let something new erupt today, oh God. Let dreams and visions come alive in their spirit today. Let dreams and visions come alive in their spirit today. And they're going to say, we can do this, Lord. We can do this, Lord. We can do this, Lord. Do it today, God. He said, I'm putting my hand on you. I'm putting, just like you feel my hand on your head. He said, tell her I'm putting my hand on her, and I'm calling her to bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in. They will follow you all the way here. Stay in the pool. Stay in the pool. Come on, can somebody shout to the Lord for that sweet lady? Come on, can you believe right now? Hey, Todd, can you and your wife come up here real quick? Hallelujah. 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 Can y'all jump in there with me? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gladly, huh? Hallelujah. When I, when, when I first saw you, because I have not met you, I, I got to see her in Birmingham a few weeks ago for the Love Life Rally. But when you walked in, man, there's such a tenderness in you. There's such a compassion in you. There's such a love in you. And people take advantage of you. You give and you give and you give. And they take and they take and they take. And sometimes we look around and say, God, when does it all come back? But the Lord said, tell him, I've seen everything he's ever given. You've never given one thing that God did not see it. And he said, tell him, I'm going to repay him. Everything. Go back and think of all the gifts that you've given away. Go back and think of all the people that you've helped. Go back and think of the broken lives that you picked up that you didn't know which way they were going to go. And every one of them, I can see them behind you. And he said, tell him because my compassion flows through him. Tell him my spirit flows through him. And not just him, because y'all are yoked together, joined hands together, that the two of you together, when I first met you, he said, he said I'm going to do something far beyond what they see right now. That Shailene, what y'all see right now is just a little bit of what God's doing in Love Life Birmingham and in Alabama. But God's going to do it more. But when you walked in, it was like the glory of the Lord was coming over you out there in the, in, in the foyer. And he said, tell him, I've seen every gift he's ever given. I've seen every sacrifice. And when you felt like it was too hard to give it up, but you did it anyway, he said, I'm going to honor that. You know what that means. Do you know what that means? Yeah, you know, you know what it means, don't you? Yeah. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Stretch your hands toward them, church. Come on. Stretch your hands toward them. Father, anoint them today, and God, begin to repay everything. Let them see it in the spirit realm, and let them see it in the natural realm over their family over all that concerns them, over their ministry, over all you've called them to fulfill, God, let them stay in the pool, that they won't grow weary of staying in the pool, and they'll keep giving, and they'll keep serving, and they'll keep giving. And Lord, just I, I see manna, I see manna, I see manna, I see manna coming to you. And the Lord said, tell them, I'm going to supply what they need, I'm going to supply what they need, I'm going to supply what they need so they can keep giving and keep picking up broken people and keep picking up those 
those up that everybody else has given up on and helping those that nobody else wants to help. And I'm going to give them what they need so they can do it in Jesus' name. Get ready, get ready, get ready because manna is coming to you so you can do what God's called you to do. Because there's dreams in you. You can't just do just yet. But the Lord said, tell him, the manna is going to be on the ground. All you got to do is pick it up and you're going to be able to fulfill what I've called you to do in Jesus' name. Do it, Lord, in this couple. Do it, Lord, in this couple. We believe it today in Jesus' name. Come on, can somebody shout for them today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you come up here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you step in there with me? Red shirt, can you come hold her hand? Hallelujah. (laughs) I, I, I just know shirts and hairstyles. That's all I know. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're not alone. And the enemy tries to convince you you're fighting life by yourself and that nobody else is worried about you and nobody cares. But God said, tell her and put her in this pool that I see everything that she has. I hold her in my hands. I've never let her go. And it felt like it sometimes along the way. But you're worth more than what a man thinks. You're worth more than what your friends think. You're worth what God thinks. And he said, tell her she's never alone. And just like you feel me grabbing your hand, the Lord is grabbing your hand today and saying, I'm holding on to you. I'm holding on to you. And you're going to know that God is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to know, you're going to reach people I'll never reach. You're going to reach people Pastor Amy will never reach. And, and, and I don't know all that what that means, but there are people that others are in an area that nobody else can get to them. They're not going to listen to me. They, they might not listen to Air, Pastor Aaron, but they're going to listen to you. So look up, woman of God. The Lord's anointing you to speak his word to those that nobody else can reach. And they're in your circle, and they're broken, and they're lost, and they don't know where they're going. But the Lord said, I've put my anointing on you, and I want to confirm to you again today, you're never by yourself. But you're going to go speak to them, and they're going to hear the word of the Lord out of your mouth, and they're going to come to Christ. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. Just like Brother Goatee over there, the Lord's going to do it with you, little skinny lady. God's going to do it. Hallelujah. What is your name? Stretch your hands towards Stephanie. Come on. Father, in the name that's above every name, we pray for Stephanie now. In Jesus' name, that your anointing would come upon her, and you'll empower her, God. You'll empower her today, God. And she'll speak to people that I can't reach, that that Billy Graham could never have reached them, that, Lord, that uh, Pastor Aaron can't reach them. But, God, she's going to reach them. Use her. Use her. Use her. Anoint her today, God, from her head to her toes, and let her know she's never, ever alone, but you are right there with her, and you're empowering her today. You're strengthening her today. You're helping her today, and she's going to walk out here saying, I can do this. I'm going to do this, and Lord, you anoint her. Look at me. I'm an evangelist, and I'm, uh, the Lord said, and I, I, I've, I've rarely ever prayed this, but the Lord said for me to lay my hands on you and, and impart what God has given me, and the Lord's going to anoint you to do the work of an evangelist. You're going to do the work of an evangelist. Father, anoint her. What you've given me, God, give it to her. What you've given me, God, give it to her. And use her to go and get them and compel them to come in so that the house of God will be full. Anoint her to do the work of an evangelist. Anoint her to do the work of an evangelist. And we believe you for it now, God, in Jesus' name. Now come on, lift both hands to heaven and say, I receive it, God. I receive it. And you go and do this. And God's going to empower you. And God's going to empower you. You're going to stand with your pastors and say, look what God is doing. Look at these that are coming in. Look at these that are coming in. And you're going to dance like you've never danced. And you know what, what that used to be like. There was a time in your life you did it for the devil. But you're going to do it for God. You're going to do it for God. You're going to do it for God. And you're going to dance like you've, I, I can see you dancing. I can see you just whirling around because you're so happy because people are coming to Christ. And people are going to say, how did that girl get so messed up? Hallelujah. The work of an evangelist. The work of an evangelist. Release it today, God, in Jesus' name. Come on, can somebody clap for her? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you come up here? Is your wife, are you married? You're single? Yeah, she's at home. Okay. I never know, so I have to ask. Hallelujah. Will you step in here? Pastor, will you come over here? Hallelujah. You've seen the glory of revival. 
you've seen the glory of revival. You've seen it. Your family has seen it. And the enemy's been lying to you and saying, you'll never see it again. It won't happen again. But the Lord said, tell him, I've anointed him. I've anointed him to stand in the gap. To stand in the gap. And when it felt like you were the only one that sometimes it felt like was standing in the gap. God said, tell him, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. And you're going to see revival again. You're going to see revival again. You're going to see revival again. Don't let go. Don't give up. Continue. Contend in the gate for revival. Contend in the gate for revival, man of God. You tell your wife, wife, wherever you are, in Jesus' name, stand together. Contend in the gates for revival. Contend in the gates for revival. Come on, stretch your hands toward him, church, and say, God, hear the prayers. Hear the prayers. And God, let us see revival. Let us see revival. Let us see revival. Let us see revival in Anniston, God. Lord, right here in in, in Oxford, God, let us see it right here in this region that we want to see the glory of God. If you're 65 years old or older, hold your hand up right now. 65 or older, hold your hand up right now. Every person, 65 or older, young people, look at me. I want you to turn, keep your hand raised. Keep your hand, 65 or older, I want you to turn around and go lay hands on every one of them and say, God, let them fight for revival. Go lay hands on every one of them and say, God, let them fight for revival. Go to them. Every one of these that have their hands there, just touch them on the shoulder. Come on, church. Stretch your hands toward him. Father, we anoint this generation. God's not done with you. God's not done with you. God's not done with you. Those that are 65 and older, go all the way to the back. Go all the way to the back. Young people, keep walking all the way to the back and lay hands on all of those in the back and say, God, let them contend for revival. Let them fight for revival. Let them not give up on revival. Let them believe for the glory of God and the moving of the Holy Spirit that, God, we're going to see it here at Calvary Temple. We're going to see it here at Calvary Temple. We're going to see it again, God. We're going to see it again, God. We're going to see it again in Jesus. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you, the Lord just told me. He said, you tell those young people to go lay hands on these older folks and say, we need you. 65 years old, hold your hand up, man of God. We need you. God's not done with 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 you. There's more there's more. There's more. Do you believe it? Come on, lift your hands with me. Come on, lift your hands and say, I want to stay in the pool. Come on, say it. I want to stay in the pool. Come on, let the devil hear you say it. Say it loud. I want to stay in the pool. Come on, say it loud again. I want to stay in the pool. God, today, help us as we leave this place. That God, that we don't want to just visit the pool. We want to stay in the pool of your anointing. And that God, we're going to pursue it. We're going to protect it. But God, we're going to practice it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Pastor and and Pastor Amy, come step in here. Hallelujah. Do you love your pastors? Stretch your hands toward them. Let me tell you something. When you were in Clanton for all those years, it was about 100 years, and it felt like it sometimes. Sister Redshirt and Brother Goatee, can y'all come pray? Brother Revival, can you come pray? Hallelujah. You come on, blonde hair, you can pray too. Hallelujah. Look at me. When you came here, the enemy was telling you what you couldn't do. And you looked at situations and said, can we really do this? But God sent you here. And God anointed you to be here. And man of God and woman of God, this is where you'll win in the pool of his presence. We're not going to survive today. We're not going to survive today without this pool. We have to have his presence And man of God, don't stop. Don't stop. You keep prophesying. You keep dreaming. You keep declaring. You're going to speak. And are we going to go with them, church? Come on. Are we going to go with them? Stretch it. Can I get all those ugly young people and that pretty girl? Can y'all come up here real quick? Can y'all come up here? And I want you to stand behind your pastor. Hallelujah. To say, pastor, we're not just in your building. We are right here with you. And And I love the older generation. So this is not to exclude us. But this young generation, if Calvary Temple is going to survive, I want you to understand we've got to have another generation of young people. We've got to pass the power of Pentecost to this next generation. Young people, get in here real close. Come in real close. Touch your pastor. Come on, touch him on the shoulder. Touch her on the shoulder. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Come on, stretch your hands toward him. Father, we believe right now for our pastors, Pastor Aaron and Pastor Amy. And God, as they stand in this little swimming pool, let them remember it in the hard times that in your presence is the fullness of joy. In your presence is the fullness of joy. That they're going to keep singing it. They're going to keep praying it. They're going to keep prophesying it. They're going to keep declaring it. They're going to keep gathering. And God, you're going to fill this house again. You're going to fill this house again. We're going to see revival again and what you saw in Clanton you saw some things that you said God I want to carry that with me take it with me but there's some things that didn't happen in Clanton that are going to happen here because you couldn't do that there but you can do it here Hallelujah. Not that there was anything wrong in Clinton, but there's something the Lord's released you to do now that you couldn't do then. There's a fresh mantle. There's a fresh mantle and a fresh anointing that God's going to empower you to do this. So run, man of God. Dream, woman of God. Declare, people of God. Prophesy, people of God. And believe what God's going to do in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Look at me. And I believe the Lord's going to give you some things to write down for this city. I'm not sure that, that uh, Ozark, uh, uh, Oxford, we're in Oxford. I get them, help me, Lord. Uh, Oxford or Anniston may have never had a declaration written over these cities. I, I say the Lord saying, go to your city leaders and say, is there a declaration over our city from the ministers of God? But I, I see you with a pen in your hand saying, whereas the people of God declare, whereas the people of God agree, whereas the people of God uh, uh, come together in agreement, whereas the people of God say, let it be resolved that this will be over this region, over Anniston and over Oxford. It'll be over this region. And I'm just telling you, man of God, go to the leaders of this city. I feel like the Lord's saying, I want to pull something off of this region. I want to pull something off this region that the decree of the Lord, you've preached the Word of God, but I believe you're going to write the Word of God, and you're going to write some things down, and it's going to change not only this house, but it could change this whole region. Hallelujah. So write it down. Write it down. Go ask them, what is the decree over Oxford? What is the decree over Anniston? And if they don't have one, write it down. Get with the people of God and pray and write down and say, this is what we believe God for in this region. Amen? I'm just telling you, God can do it. And maybe God sent you here to pull a lid off of this region to release the revival we're hoping for. Stretch your hands towards your pastors. Come on. Father, thank you, Lord, for our shepherds. Thank you for our pastors. Lord, put your word in their hands. You put your word in their mouth. Now put your word in their hands. And let them write down what you're saying. Let them write down what you're saying. And let them see the work of the Lord. Let them see the work of the Lord in Oxford and in Anniston. We believe it, God, in the name of Jesus. Dream, dream, dream. Come on, can you give your pastors a great big hand? Hallelujah. Come on, can we lift our hands one last time to the Lord? Come on, lift your hands and say it with me. I want to stay in the pool. Come on, let the devil hear. I want to stay in the pool. Father, we believe today, oh God, that we'll stay in the pool of your presence. And God, we'll be right where you want us to be. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Get out of my pool. Am I standing in it now? Come on, help me. Am I standing in it now? Come on, indulge me. Am I standing in it now? How did I get in here? I made a decision. And I'm just telling you, the Lord said for you to take it home. Because the women are lining up. Take it home with you. And remember this, that God's going to do this for you. Hallelujah. I'll buy you a new pool. And God's going to do it. You take it home with you as a reminder of what the Lord's going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Can I let you hug somebody and let you go back to your seat for just a minute? Can you hug somebody? And just head back to your seat for just a minute. Just tell somebody, we got to stay in the pool. We got to stay in the pool. We got to stay in the pool. Hallelujah. 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 I love these young people. So proud of you guys. Hallelujah. All these ugly boys and that pretty girl, they're precious. Hallelujah. Handsome boys, I mean. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you look at me for just one quick moment? Because I know we've kept you way past time. And, uh, and, and, and I kind of apologize. And, and yet I, I kind of, you know what? We watch movies for hours. This generation binge watches 30 hours of Netflix. 
So it's okay to stay in the house of the Lord for a little while sometimes. Look at me. Can I ask you to help me with something? How many believe we could come back and do one of our outreaches here sometime in the future when Pastor Aaron says, let's go love the city? And we take bags of candy to every business in Anniston and in Ozark. Oxford. Oxford. I'm going to get it right in Oxford. All right, we're going to get it right. I, I've just got it in my head and I can't get it out. So we're going to go to Oxford and, and this region, and we're going to help our pastor gather in this city. How many believe I'm an evangelist? I'm a pure evangelist. And so we got to win souls. we got to win souls. we got to win souls. I'm, I asked Pastor if I could just share one quick thing that we're doing. We help churches that are this close to closing to reposition themselves for success. Uh, I have 13 churches across the nation right now. The church I told you about in Portland, Oregon, two years ago in the middle of the pandemic was down to 13 people. Last week they had over 100. Isn't that awesome? And God is helping them reposition to, to reposition those churches. McDonald's knows this. If you build more McDonald's, you sell more hamburgers. We don't need to be closing churches. Can I tell you this? Last year in the Assemblies of God, we closed 18 churches in Alabama. We closed 18 churches. The Baptist church closed more than that. My brother's a Southern Baptist minister, and he said, Johnny, we're closing churches so fast right now. And the Lord has just put it in my heart. I've, I've asked our district superintendent, please don't close another church until you give us as evangelists a chance to go in and do outreaches and help gather people again. There's a church. Does anybody know where Luverne, Alabama is? In Luverne, Alabama, just south of Montgomery, there's a church there that was down to three people in a building this size. Three people. And they were holding on, man of God. They were contending for it. And they wouldn't let them shut the doors. They just kept paying the power bill and believing God could do it. I started working with Pastor Keith a year and a half ago. And last Sunday, they had over 75 people. Just last Sunday. And so for a year and a half, we've been working with them and helping them do monthly outreaches to go out into the community and help them. We have 13 churches right now that are this close to closing. And I'm begging the Lord for the resources that we don't close them. I'm begging the Lord. Do you know the war is always over money? Because if we don't have the money, we don't have the resources to go and do that ministry. And Pastor Aaron will tell you, I'm not lazy. I work very, very hard to do what I do. I do this every week. I travel 50 weeks a year. I, I travel 50 Wednesdays a year. And I'm in a different church every Wednesday and every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday somewhere uh, across the country. And I will work very hard. It takes us $3,000 per church to turn them around. And we work with them up to a year and a half. And that's a lot of money. But over a year and a half, that's really not a lot of money. But we have to print cards. We have to pay for gasoline. Uh, we have to uh, get re resources to go out into the community. We have to help groups come in. And uh, our district superintendent can tell you all about that. And, of course, we did this in Clanton many, many years ago. I'm going to ask you to pray, and if you can help me, I need your help today. I believe the Lord sent me here to stand with my friend because I'm here to serve this man of God, and I'm here under his anointing. But I believe the Lord sent me here for you to help me. Maybe, maybe you can help one of these whole churches. Maybe the Lord has given you gold, and you've got $3,000 you can give. I promise you we will use your resources, and we will work tirelessly to help these churches. We've, we've got churches in Brussels, Belgium that we're helping. We've got churches in Wuhan, China. I was in Wuhan helping a church right before the pandemic started. And there's a church there that we're helping right now. We're, we're doing this right outside of Paris, France, in a little community. We're doing this in Amsterdam. We're doing this in regions uh, in Canada that we're helping churches. The only thing that we need are the resources. Anybody remember Billy Graham? How many of you know he didn't do his crusades for free? That took a lot of money for people to help them to rent chairs and sound systems and flights and materials and all the things that they did. We just know if God's people can help us, we know we can go win people to Christ. And do you know you'll get the same reward that I get for going to them? You get the same reward for sending us to them. And you might not go to these cities, but I will be your ambassador, and I will go and I will tell them. Amen? And if the Lord speaks to your heart, boy, we need your help right now. Can you bow your heads with me? And can you just say, Lord, what's my part? How can I win souls? Because when you give to this ministry, everything that we do is to win souls. 
everything that we do is to win souls. Would you just say, Lord, how can I do this? Maybe you own a business and your business could underwrite one of these churches. Boy, we need your help. And I promise you, we'll take all these gifts and we'll use them to advance these churches. Father, you speak to your people. You tell them what to give. And we're careful to give you the praise now in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Everybody say, I love the little preacher. I think he's a sweet little man. I can't wait to see you next time. And I love you, Pastor Aaron. Amen. Can we, can we give Brother Johnny a big hand today? Thank him for his ministry. How many of you have been blessed by his ministry today? Listen, we talked about it at the beginning of the service. We sow seed so that we'll reap a harvest. I believe that we need to sow seed into Brother Johnny today. So Brother, Brother Winston has uh, uh, some ushers ready. If our ushers will go ahead and uh, stand at the doors. We're going to have ushers standing at the doors today. And we are asking you to do me a favor. Uh, uh, my wife has already got ours. I'm not asking you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. Let me say that again. I'm not going to ask you to do something that I'm not going to do. I'm sowing seed into this ministry because I believe in this ministry, I believe in this man, and I believe in the anointing of God on him. So I'm going to ask our ushers to get in place. And as you leave today, I want you to go by and I want you to bless this ministry today. We're going to give them a special offering. If you would stand with me, and I'm going to pray a blessing over you as you leave. Yes, don't forget to come to get your Bibles at, uh, at Brother Johnny's table. He will meet you out there, and I'm pretty sure that he will pray for you and talk to you and everything else out there as well. So uh, make sure to stop by and see him. But please, 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 let's sow seed into this ministry so that we can reap a harvest in the future. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you do, you've done in this place. I thank you for the words that have been spoken over our people. But, Lord, today we pray for a blessing over those that are about to give, that you would let the Spirit of God sow seed into this so that we can see the harvest come. We, it may not be a harvest inside of our church. It may not even be a harvest uh, uh, in this area. But, Lord, there will be a harvest. That There will be people that run up to us and say, I'm here because you gave so many years ago to Brother Johnny's ministry. God, in the name of Jesus, let your spirit go with us. As we leave this room, let us represent you well in everything that we do. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. Love each other on your way out today. We love you, and we'll see you Wednesday night. Don't forget, we have a baptism meeting right after service, right over here in this, uh, right, right now over here in this classroom, if you'll come and meet me.